Hello, this is Gonzalo Lira speaking to you live from Kharkov, Ukraine. And this is the Roundtable. And today I am joined by two uh, guys that I've known for years now. And it's a pleasure to have them on. I'm talking about Ian Miles Chong. Ian, how's it going? Good. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Thanks for yeah. having me on. Thanks for coming. It's a real pleasure. Ian is a sure. famous uh, Twitter personality and YouTuber. His links are in the description below. And Ian has been uh, an assiduous commentator on the whole U.S. situation, which is really like a fucking clown show at this point. And, it of is. course, I'm joined by Felix Rex, otherwise known as Black Pigeon Speaks. Felix, how's it going, man? Good to see you. It, it, goes, it goes well. It absolutely goes well. I wouldn't call myself uh, an influential Twitter user, but I would uh, say that my Twitter is being used to accentuate that same clown world that you were talking about just there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I pretty much, I pretty much just point out the utter, utter lunacy of the world we now inhabit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I do, yeah. I do it from an ironic and sarcastic point of view. And the problem is, I get so many people thinking I'm saying these things seriously. They do. So, I mean, you've yeah, been yeah. in trouble for this, right? People called you all kinds of things, all yeah. kinds of names. I mean, your name was brought up by MPs in the UK. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, wow. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> What, what, did, what did Felix say that, that, that MPs in the UK were talking about him? Well, they thought he was an extremist, right? Because, yeah, you know, you yeah. used to talk to Sargon. I don't know if you still yeah. do. And, and they were attacking him, you know, as some yeah. sort of white nationalist or something. Yeah. And they cited your tweets, you know, your sarcastic tweets. And they were like, look, he talks to this white nationalist. It's like, yeah. wait a second. Yeah. He's yeah. not being serious. Yeah, the white nationalist living in Japan in East Asia. Right? <laughs> yeah. They uh, yeah. call me that, too, sometimes. It's like, really? Yeah. yeah. Do I look well, white? I mean, you, I think I saw one of your tweets one time and you said something along the lines of when they were saying that uh, Asians would no longer be considered persons of color in California for admission yep. to universities. And you said something like, well, I'm glad to be joining my white brothers now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. Oh, by the way, I, for, I forgot to mention in the intro, because like before we do a show chat, like I always talk to the guests and tell them, you know, the rules or whatever. See, like, uh, or what we're going to do or whatever. Um, but on this channel, I'm demonetized. So you can say whatever the fuck you want. And it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> That's Join fucking awesome. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Join the club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and I'm, uh, Chad, sorry for this ungodly hour for US, for you guys who are in the US. But Ian's in Malaysia. Uh, Felix is in Japan. And uh, yeah, but the thing is, we're all like, I'm in Ukraine. You're, you're in Malaysia, Japan. And we're all obsessed yep. about what the fuck is going on in America. I mean, we are seeing the death throes it's of launching. the American empire, man. This is fucking funny. It I mean, is. It's coming. Well, it is. I mean, I was just in the United States in April, May, and the beginning of June. I was visiting my brother. I was helping him do some uh, home improvement on his house. Just a, you, you flew know, all the way to Japan to help him. <laughs> <laughs> well, weirdly enough, I arrived and he said, oh, I have this project I need some help with. So I kind of got yeah. stuck with a hammer and a drill. Yeah, and, uh, yeah you know, he, I was he there. lied to you. He said it was you were coming for the christening or a marriage right. or a wedding or something or a funeral. Yeah. And no, Just it's home health, improvement, you know, it's man. Finance. But yeah. you know, my brother, he lives in Seattle, and it, it's like ground zero for this stuff. And it was Oof. just just bizarre because I remember Seattle as a boy and how much it's changed. It's it's irrevocably changed at this point. Mm -hmm. But not only that, it's just it's just become. From I, I think they call it the Emerald City, you know the yep, Emerald Philadelphia city. is the city of brotherly love, and they, they all have these little yeah. monikers. Where Seattle was the Emerald City, and I'd call it like the shit stain city at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you, you know. can say the same thing with San Francisco. When I was last there, you know, it was a few years ago, it was nothing at all like it was uh, twenty years ago when I was there. You know, it's yeah. like everything has changed. Everything is filthy. There's homeless people over the place. You know, like when I was there in like the mm -hmm. mid two thousands. I saw like maybe two homeless people just yeah. to, you know, it's typical city stuff. Right. But then when I last went there in like 2018, it was like, oh, my God, what the hell? Like there's drug users all over the place. Everywhere. The it's like what it's like a do? plague. It's like yeah. a plague. Yeah. Right. And if you say anything about it, like on social media, you know, you'll have people attacking you being like, oh, it's a city. Get used to it. It's like, no, it's not. Like, what the hell? I don't experience this when I go to Kuala Lumpur or Singapore or Tokyo. What no. the hell? No, yeah. absolutely not. You don't see drug needles lying all over the nope. place, tent cities. You don't see people smeared in their own fecal matter. And and mm -hmm. and it's what what I find sad is people just sort of uh, attribute that to normal city behavior at this point. But it never yep. used to be. It yep. never did. Well, you wanted diversity. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> a diversity of mental uh, um, conditions, you know, that's what they have. No, I mean, it's, so it's absurd. Like I, I was in, in uh, Seattle and Portland 20 years ago. And, and back then, you know, Seattle was like, like this uh, too cool for school kind of place. Right. Everybody's yeah. like, oh, we're so cool. And we got all these like little little coffee places that are just like just so and all that. And of course, you know, it's ground zero for Starbucks. So that crap mm -hmm. is all over the place. Right. Uh, yeah. And Portland was like like actually kind of hippie. Right, I actually I liked it so much. Portland was it. Portland was cool before the Antifa yeah. curse, yeah. before yeah. the Antifa plague. Portland, it was hippie, but a hippie in a good way. Yeah, right? yeah, very yeah, friendly, nice people. Kinds. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 like really, really friendly, nice people. Now, man, fuck that. I, I no, and I've got some friends who are living out there still, and they're like, no, yep. no, no. But like uh, you know, the issue becomes now the the big issue, of course, and we got to talk about this. You know, they're going to pardon student debt to the tune yep. of ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars. Three hundred billion dollars for taxpayers. Yeah, yeah. So basically, basically, mm -hmm. let me get this straight. If you couldn't afford to go to college and you went to some mm -hmm. technical school for like six months or a year to get some job, some blue collar job, your taxes are going to be paying for the women's studies degrees of these assholes yep. am i getting yes. this right please explain. that is correct right. and you'll i think a bigger point is that you'll be paying for big law right all these kids who go to harvard for instance you know they their tuition fees are the ass and they come out and for the first couple of years they're not earning that much you know i mean they're supposed to earn quite a bit like their median salary is something uh, to the tune of two hundred fifty thousand dollars but on, in the first and second years, they don't make any money at all. And then the third year, it, it's immediately they get bumped up to like 300K. So you're paying for their tuition. These are kids who are slated to be the top 1% and you are paying for their tuition. That is yeah. insane. Yeah. Also, also, you got it. There was a there was a father I saw a clip on Twitter today and he was approaching Elizabeth Warren, better known yep. as Pocahontas. We like to call her Pocahontas. <laughs> Pocahontas. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to do my best Trump. We call her Pocahontas. I've tried to do my Trump, but uh, his, his father, this father, um, he was uh, coming up to Elizabeth Warren and he asked her, you know, uh, my daughter and I saved up for her tuition and we paid for it. Do we get any kind, of, any kind of refund for paying for it? Do we get any kind of reimbursement for it? Or <clears throat> and then I was thinking to myself, no, 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 your daughter doesn't get any, and neither do you. Your taxes are going to go pay for the other people. As he Fuck said. you. Fuck you. <laughs> and, and, and as he had said, three hundred billion dollars. They're doing this now at a time of unprecedented inflation. Like the inflation rate is, we're looking at probably the highest inflation since the Carter administration. And at we're least. doing this at a time. At, at least. least we're also doing this at a time of, of unending global. You know, I I'm not going to go down the full conspiracy. Unending global fuckery. Hole, but, you know. So yeah, but, I mean, this is. <laughs> hey, oh, you know the big whoa. problem in all of this is oh, uh, they've done nothing yes. to address the root cause of hey. the problem. You know, hey, we've... Uh, uh, Pell wait, 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 wait. Hang on, Mish. I got to introduce you, man. Because, like, first of all, what happened was that uh, Felix dropped out. I don't know what's going on. He, he had tech issues. He'll, he'll come back on as soon as he's back on. Uh, chat, you know, it's not that Felix just converted into Mish. This is uh, <laughs> Michael... <laughs> yeah, this is Michael Mish Shedlock who runs a fantastic website called uh, Mish Talk, where basically he posts, you know, like two or three times a day about economic issues. I've known uh, Mish since donkey's years. And uh, Mish, it's a real pleasure to have you on. It's, it's great hey, to see hey, you again. It's, it's, You're it's looking great to be on here. Uh, uh, and You're actually, midnight uh, central is a fantastic time for me you wanted me to be on at like eight o'clock in the morning or something Hell, i'm gonna be up till two o'clock in the morning i'm not gonna be up at eight o'clock in the morning but yeah mish is out in chicago by the way yeah. he's a night well, owl just like me. i escaped illinois but i still stay on central time um i uh live in saint george utah now escaped illinois two years ago and trust me it's good to be out of illinois let me tell you a little bit about illinois here and then we'll talk more about student debt we had a home that was worth about $400,000, $15,000 a year on property taxes on a home for $400,000. Now, yeah. in Illinois, you do not own your own home. You rent your house from yourself and pay the state $15,000 a year to do so. And it's crazy. So anyway, I escaped Illinois. 
But the the big problem here, actually, there's so many problems with uh, with the uh, the student loan cancel is cancellation. I mean, you can make up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you're going to give them twenty thousand dollars free money. What the hell is that all about? Really? That is just funny yep. shit. Hang on, hang on. Before I get going, Felix is back, and I want to show chat this. These are my Italian cigarettes, right? These are Marlboros, right? I'm here in Ukraine, and. Get a load of this. This is the, I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, I hope you can. It's the uh, Ukraine tax stamp, uh, you know. They donated these suckers and, uh, you know, for the troops or whatever, and they put the tax on it. <laughs> I'm gonna keep one of these. I bought like a carton. I'm keeping one of them for like a souvenir. 10% uh, 10, 10 kickback to the big guy on everything. Oh yeah, bro. that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, do you think that the big guy is gonna get a piece of the action of this, uh, low, you know, student debt? Um... Oh, well, he's, he gets, he's gonna get a he's piece buying of the action on anything one. at this point. I mean, he's, he's that $100 million house in London ain't gonna buy it itself. <laughs> itself yep. when this war is over mm -hmm. yeah, look i mean I, I we were talking about it like you know the unfairness of this fucking student loan and we all know why he's doing it because he wants to get the young people out to yep. the polls in november to vote for these fucking assholes so that he can uh you know maintain his uh you know his reign as the idiot in chief and by the way mish uh, like i told the, the guys here, this is demonetized. You can say whatever the fuck you want, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, so, so feel free to say anything. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the I mean, look, they solve no problems. The, the, we have massive teacher pensions. We got coaches making millions of dollars a year, and then they're making, and when they retire, they'll get a pension of a million dollars a year or whatever. You know, the administrative costs have gone through the roof. They fixed none of those problems. And a lot of this actually goes back to the uh, Bankruptcy Reform Act of 2005, signed by uh, George Bush, actually, that, that made student debt not dischargeable in bankruptcy. That was just a license for schools to go out there, raise tuitions, sell these useless degrees in English literature, offer degrees in culinary arts, Promising people, oh, we'll get you a, we'll get you a job in your field. Well, guess yeah, what? A five -star a restaurant. A yeah, right. And a yep. job in yep. your yep. field is working at McDonald's. I think that my favorite uh, that I've heard of is getting a degree in Klingon language. I think it's somewhere in California. It's real. Thank you. They, they, I'm they not kidding. That? No it's way. Language, yeah. It's a real thing. Yeah. Oh, it's, I think it's oh, UCLA man. or something. Like, this is what decadence looks Kabla. like. They teach you oh, the yeah. Klingon language. Fuck, yeah. man. There is a course right now. It's a credited course in the University of Texas. I mean, it's a good place, right, usually. But it's they're teaching them Taylor Swift's music, like the, the meanings to the lyrics of her songs. And it's like, oh. what? Oh, Why is someone taking a degree in this? Is, is this like in music or wi women's studies? Or is it one of those courses that like is, is you know, a interdisciplinary? <laughs> it's an interdisciplinary, yeah. Like anybody can take it. So it's it's basically, you know, free credits, right? You sit there, you sit through this nonsense, a spiel of a... I mean, I'm not really offended that it exists. I'm offended that someone's getting paid to teach it. It's like, what the hell? And yeah, I could, I could, I could, I could teach it. it. And, and this would be like the one could. and only class. It would be, you know... She's pissed off at her boyfriends who pumped yep. her and dumped her. That's the course. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, that's the course, right? And it's like two semesters. It's like, really? This, you're giving people free credits and they're learning absolutely nothing. Nice. Yeah, no, it, it actually goes back to high school. A lot of these kids, you know, have no math skills, no reading yep. skills, no, no uh, English language skills. And, you know, and then you're just going to take all these people, give them a Pell Grant. So they can mm -hmm. go to college. A lot of them drop out after two years. They've got all this debt. And then the government just comes by and says, oh, I'm going to just get a, just going to bail this all out. It, it's it's just it's it's beyond irritating. And the same thing is actually going to happen again. You can see it right now with what, you know, California is doing uh, uh, tomorrow. California is expected to pass legislation mandating. Um, no gasoline cars by by 2035. There yeah, is saw that no well. plan for an infrastructure for this. No way to get the lithium, the cobalt, the manganese, 
you know, the, the which is, which is, I don't mean to interrupt, which is much worse for the environment than uh, yep. fossil fuels. But anyway, it, sorry, excuse me. Canada does too, 2030. Does, and the state of California does. It's just inflation after inflation. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been a, I was a huge debt deflationist for a long time, but I, I'm looking at, at what's happening here now. We got deglobalization, decarbonization. We've got uh, uh, student loan bailouts. All of these things are are are, are quite inflationary. And of course, the you know Different the war in money. Ukraine, the stupid policy decisions of Germany to abandon nuclear is destroying the EU. And of course, Italy shouldn't be in the EU at all. I mean, I don't know where it stops. So it's not just the United States. No, it's everywhere. China is 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 a basket case over its imploding um, uh, housing bubble there. It's just, it's a disaster. Yeah, but, but Mish, the difference with China is that they are actually producing shit. They are actually making yeah. money. Right? Yeah, what the fuck is would, going on with you. Europe? Go ahead. Yep. I was going to say the same thing. Like what we've seen is just the, the amount of money being pumped into the system in places like Europe and North America over the past couple of years. I mean, that has gone not into, for example, you know, after World War II, they, they pumped a lot of money in through the GI Bill and a lot of infrastructure projects, but that went to new factories, it went to new highways, it went to people being educated and coming out as engineers, as, as yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Whereas uh, all of the money has been put out in the last couple of years have gone to Netflix subscriptions, Uber mm -hmm. Eats delivery, <laughs> more Amazon, uh, you know, this sort of thing. It hasn't generated anything Tangible. There's nothing productive about it. You're right. not correct. Nothing. It's, it's a transfer and, and of wealth, right? In the EU, is we have a backdoor bailout of Italy. Because who would be buying Italian bonds here except for the ECB? You know, it's just economic madness everywhere I look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, like, look, my, my thinking is also that the, the transition to a service economy for an industrial economy, right? Is, uh, my thinking is that, you know, in a severe recession, depression, right? I mean, let, let's talk, call it what it is. We're, we're going into a severe recession. depression, right? A depression, uh, yeah. Actual yeah. depression. See, when, when you have like a, 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 an industrial economy, you know, and, and everything gets shut down, well, the factory remains. There's some asset that remains. But with, an, with a service economy, you know, you fire the people, you shut it all down, and what do you have? You got the air. It's just poof. You got a bunch of used office furniture and some, you know, out of date computers, and that's it. And I'm like thinking, what the hell is, how is the United States or the West for that matter, the, the Anglo, um, Anglo American Western regime, what are they going to do to restart this whole thing? I, I don't think that the, the West is going to be restarted this. for a generation. What's happening yeah. now is a calculated implosion of the global economy, and it's happening absolutely everywhere. There's no way that anyone could tell me. Now, I do understand that governments are corrupt. Politicians are only thinking about their next election, but there's no one who's going to be able to tell me that there wasn't somebody at any of these discussions when the crisis in the Ukraine broke out and you were in a, in a European Commission's uh, meeting on possible sanctions. There wasn't one person that put up their hands and uh they are one no, of our main no. sources of I, I know why. Um, I know why. I have an insight to this. Because all these people who are in the leadership class, they're like fucking lemmings. Because they all graduated from the same schools. They're all buddies with one another. They all uh, went up the, the hierarchy together. And so they are terrified of being out of step with the group, with their in-group. Because they don't have yeah. any connection to the people, right? Because the previous leadership class, I mean, think of somebody like Harry Truman, for instance. He was a guy from Missouri, a haberdasher. He had the folks back home. He couldn't do stupid shit that would hurt the folks back home. They, they'd, you know, rip his head off. And he was aware of that. So if there was like a, an emerging consensus in Washington, but it hurt the people of Missouri, he'd say, hey, no, no, we're not going to do this because it's going to hurt my people. In Europe, yeah, but I would, say, I would say class, that this is a different situation. You're talking about a global, a continental meltdown. I saw today that they're reckoning that it was. Hang on, the, I'm uh, just going to freshen up my coffee. I'm still here. All right, they're talking to the uh, the the opposition. Uh, I guess the opposition, the head of the opposition in the Bundestag, and he was pretty much going along the lines of by winter time, 60 percent of German households will be spending 100 percent of disposable income on energy, food, and rent. <laughs> what, you're, what you're talking about at this point subsistence. is subsistence. That's subsistence. I'm hearing some real horror stories like 
you, you know, uh, 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 you know, twenty thousand, the equivalent of twenty thousand dollars for energy. I don't oh, know yeah. whether these things are, are 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 true or not. Oh no, they're real. Like uh, if you go to the UK, a lot of uh, small stores, like restaurants in particular, like chippy stores that they sell fish and chips, they're going out of business because you know last year uh, the bill would be like say a thousand dollars a month or a thousand pounds a month, and now it's like ten thousand pounds. Like you can't yeah. afford that. You know, that's and you can, nobody's going to buy twenty to twenty five twenty five pound bags of uh, fish and chips. Exactly. Right? Right. Yeah, exactly. So they're closing down. I mean, that's the only thing they can once, do. Once smart. you create our businesses, especially small businesses like this, it's going to take a generation to recoup any sort yep. of. This is not, and, and this is not like, for example, localized. They're doing this worldwide right now, and, it is, and yeah. it's you'll it's own funny. nothing it's, and you'll be happy. Yeah, well, <laughs> this gets back. To you the will eat the bugs. You will eat yep. the bugs, and you'll have no privacy. I mean, that's the <laughs> thing that that line that people forget, right? In that one video. It starts if you will have no privacy and and nobody remembers that part but that's the serious part you know the rest of it is just the uh, icing on the cake well the i don't know if you guys heard that me is the digital currency shit because it, they can oh, yeah. if, if you say the wrong thing on social media are they going to cancel away. your ability to buy food is that how it's going to fucking work in the brave yeah the social credit that right for us? That's what yeah. Biden uh, just sunk a whole bunch of money into. I mean, he did an executive order that not a lot of people paid attention to, but they're doing uh, research into digital currencies. They want to transition the U.S. dollar into a digital dollar because, you know, they, they understand that the uh, petrodollar is on the wane, right? I mean, it, 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 at, at some point, oh, yeah. every country that sells oil or buys oil is going to be like, wait, why are we paying all this in U.S. dollars? Like, they, they hate oil. Why aren't we using rubles? Why aren't we using the yuan, you know? And so well, that's America what happened realizes. with India. Yeah. That, that's just yeah. what happened with India. It's, it must be freaking the fuck out of the people at the Echoes building. I mean, Mish would know better than anybody. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the, the petrodollar thesis, I disagree with, with, with on most. The, the, uh, uh, the petrodollar came about, the U.S. is energy, ener energy independent now, almost. Now, how, how long that lasts, I don't know. But, you know, when the U.S. stopped needing to spend, send all that money to Saudi Arabia and uh, we're, we're getting a lot of the energy here now, that was really the end of the petrodollar. And for the United States, it yeah, was arguably a very good thing. So yeah, now you know, it what replaces the global, it. You know, of, of the global course, demand you know, we the think we're going to, you know, do everything with 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 clean energy and and and, you know, wind power and solar. And okay, where are we going to get the batteries from? How are we going to get the electricity from the uh, uh, Arizona desert to Chicago? None of this works. I mean, the the you know California initiated this plan today, you know, to to ban uh, gasoline, you know, uh, powered cars by 2035. Well, that's great. You know, essentially what they've done is they said, okay, we're we're going to make the world's largest experiment in energy and and uh we're just gonna try it and we don't have a plan on how to get there yeah That's what they because did and it's EPA not going to shut work. down their minds you know i mean they the, california could literally put out uh lithium right they've got they've got all of this rare earth material just buried in the mountains and they just won't do it it's against the epa regulations it's well they won't get a permit you, yeah, you know, that's the thing. You, you know, Biden passed all these credits for EVs, but it was every one of these credits was mandated on the fact that this stuff has to be produced in the U.S. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? No one can get a permit to produce anything here. So we yep. have seven thousand dollars in EV credits per vehicle, but the, the, they're dependent on uh, two things. Half of that credit was was that the materials come from the U.S.? Well, when are we going to ramp up the mines, okay? And then the other half was the, that they're going to assemble the batteries here in the U.S. Like, yeah, okay, when's that going to happen? So, it, it, you know, there was a lot of the, you know, hype over $7,000 per vehicle, <laughs> but I'm wondering if anybody can get it. Even the dealerships are questioning it. They're like, uh, so what happens to the cars that are already sold? What happens to you know these vehicles that where we can't tell where they're exactly made? Not every company discloses where these things are made. You know, for instance, Tesla gets its batteries made in China. Does yes. that mean that they don't qualify? 
I mean, there's all these questions, right? And Biden, uh, I mean, his administration, because I don't think he, you know, he's asleep, right? Uh, so, he's not <laughs> running anything. Yeah, he's now. not on there, right? So, no, yeah, the administration has not... Groping small children, yeah. that's what he's doing, yeah. And sniffing, sniffing women, yeah. And so... <laughs> He can't. I mean, his administration can't give anybody answers. So this the seven thousand dollar credit worthless because they don't know how to reclaim that money. It's like, do we have to pay for it? Do we have to claim it, or is it the customer who has to do it? Nobody knows. There's no details. So what the hell? I mean, it's it's all talk basically at this point. And the thing that I despise the most about this whole the, the situation is that you look at Tesla's balance sheet and you realize that they don't make cars what they do is they make carbon credits and that's where they make their money mm -hmm. uh, basically yeah. it is the the government putting its thumb on the scale insofar as this business and it's turned tesla into well i, I don't know if it's still the largest company in the world or well, certainly the largest car company but th that is not congruent with the number of vehicles that it manufactures it's in its position in the market but strictly because the of government largesse and i'm like yeah. when does this end man it's, and it's not even, I mean, like Tesla's not even the worst of it. Like uh, uh, Ford and General Motors are even worse because Biden doesn't like Tesla, right? Because Elon Musk, he, they, they don't like him, I guess. So he, they he cut him like, off. Biden they screwed him on ESG. And, and uh, uh, Tesla's non-union. That's the beef. That's yeah, exactly, beef yeah. With Tesla. So they're going to these other guys, and they're even worse than, than, than Tesla in every single regard, right? The cars explode. The Chevy, the Chevy Volt blows up. The batteries are <laughs> unstable. It literally blows up. It could kill you. I've seen videos. And this is what I've they're putting videos. out there. Yeah. 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 But, and they're getting subsidized. They're not making any real money because people are buying Teslas instead of these uh, these exploding cars because Teslas are safe. Uh, so, I mean, what the hell? Like, the government's actually subsidizing a bad product. Well, Teslas, at this point, is just sort of making its own money, so it's fine. But, but somebody, you know, it, somebody, yeah, yeah, somebody told me that if they mined all of the minerals necessary for the batteries on the planet, right, it would not be enough to create enough batteries to replace the current vehicles. So, yeah. so it, it, at best, it's a stopgap measure to have these EVs. I mean, I mean, it's the, environmental, the environmental pollution of extracting those minerals is just oh, catastrophic. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I've looked into it. The, the whole point of, of it's more environmentally friendly to basically strip mine and pollute, not pollute, like poison, the land and the rivers that uh, the tributaries yep. that take this stuff off. That's a better solution than, let's say, a hybrid car. You know, I mean, it just, mm -hmm. none of this is what they're going along that makes any sense. And this goes back to what I was saying to you before. And I, I would agree with you, Gonzalo, to a point on the fact that, that these people are all part of a machine and they're part of a, a sort of organic, globulous nebulous creature that wants to pretty much be part of something and they're they're terrified of being othered but what i would say is that there's definitely i i don't want to be the alex jones in here saying you know they're turning the frogs gay but and they, they, were. Are. They, they are, are. they are and they are they, they are yes yeah. there are <laughs> nebulous and nefarious and absolutely sinister hands behind what's happening right now and i mean it's the a great reset. Felix, that you think that, that it, it is the world that can have But these fuckers are fools. That's the thing. No, no, yeah. I'm not saying it's them. I mean, you take a look at something like they probably set agendas, but there are people behind them and people behind them too. I mean, like the, the one thing is, as you said, we could talk about anything, but I don't think we can talk about things like banking. Like every video I've ever made about banking, all I ever do is talk about you know, fractional reserve banking or or. Federal Reserve. These, these oh, oh, Felix, all Felix get I'm sorry. I'm so, sorry. I, 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 I neglected, I neglected to say something. Mish is your twin brother here. <laughs> <laughs> Fractional Reserve banking is fraud, period. That's the problem with Fractional Reserve banking in a nutshell. It's problem fraud. That, it, 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 that, it, allows, yeah. it allows a bank to lend out more money than exists. And, yeah. and, and of course, you, you know, <laughs> They don't even make an excuse for it anymore. You know, this whole money multiplier theory Credit. is just wrong. It's it's yeah. It's not like you know you know money gets low, lent over and over and over again. And money is actually just created out of nothing. Out of thin air. Out of, out of, out of, out of Friedman was right. You know, like when when you start printing money and, and deciding, oh, I just need an extra trillion dollars, so I'm going to do it. Th that's exactly what's happening. I think. I would hope that the world wakes up to it because the implosion is going to be phenomenal when that happens. Well, that's, and to add to that, you got to ask yourself the question then, 
is why do we pay taxes? Because yeah. if they're just if they're just pulling this stuff out of the thin air, it, what taxes are is a humiliation ritual. It's a humiliation more. ritual. If you, you go back to feudal Japan, well, I'm living in Tokyo right now, uh, or if you go back to let's say uh, medieval Europe, half of the collection of taxes was a humiliation ritual to show who controls you. I mean, they even had like taxation on uh, probably all of you guys saw the Mel Gibson movie uh, uh, Braveheart. When a yep. woman would get married on a lord's land, he had the uh, right of prima nocte. First, like he could basically bang the guy's wife before he did. And that was just another form of ritual humiliation. And, and as far as I can tell, with fractional reserve banking, what Ian just said, what Mish just said, the, the taxes, paying taxes at this point is just a form of, of ritual humiliation at this point because there's no there's no tangible reason to be paying taxes if and i've even seen uh governors of of one of the uh federal reserve i can't remember which one it was maybe out of illinois or somewhere where he was saying you don't have to worry there's not going to be bank runs we can create as much money as we need hmm. that's the that's the right. ellen brown theory by the way right. yeah uh, that's the mmt theory you know th that uh look uh, uh oh japan did all of this and it didn't hurt them why shouldn't we try it well you know J japan you know for all the money they spent for all the bridges they built to nowhere you know you know what good did it ever do their economy you know you know th they're the world's largest debtor nation when it when at one point they were the world's largest creditor you know okay japan didn't implode yet but you know they probably will and and all it's going to take is just you know once inflation kicks in in japan and i believe it's going to be ha going to happen on demographics japan's going to have one hell of a time stopping well i, I would agree with that the two things I, I would i would inject into that is most of the the debt that japan has is held within japan so it's not externalized debt it's not owned like mm -hmm. the united states debt by china and, and japan for example and the other thing is, is that, you know, Japan, a lot of people talk about the demographic implosion of this country, and that is true. But the one thing is, is the, this island's the size of California and has 136 million people or so. I mean, I, I, I think they could lose half their population and still be able to Yeah. And, and so, I mean, and also what the other thing is, is that a lot of the Japanese have already resigned themselves to the idea of them becoming poor. So they're they're not they're not like well, we've got to keep GDP going we've got to keep it going because they they take a look at countries like America or, or Europe where you have I, I just saw a couple of days ago where border patrol agents were opening the gates to illegal migrants and they're like I don't know about fifty thousand walk through or something I think mm -hmm. since Biden's taken over it's two point two million or something yeah. like that they don't have the internal social issues that the United States and and European countries do so I think even if they do become poorer and there is uh i agree with you once things start getting uh, harder but the thing is is they have much tighter uh familial bonds and much tighter communities it's a high and trust so society not, you don't have that in america it's a high high trust society so uh it's very easy i, I think it'd be a lot easier for them to to wave it out uh, as it were than it will be for western societies that's just it, that's an aside from the economic and i think you're right though Mich, in, in terms of economy going it's the same with South Korea, right? I mean, they're going through some implosions as well. A lot of corruption with Samsung, but they're not going to experience what America would experience if it were in the same position. I mean, in America, we saw what happened in 2020. It was massive riots all over the place. Banks were being looted. Cops were being killed. And now, you know, like, this is the power of the media. No one talks about it. Nobody talks about how they burned down entire cities or city blocks yeah. and how those businesses, mostly small businesses owned by minorities, mostly never recovered. I mean, these people lost their life savings and nobody talks about it. It's insane. Well, that's uh, another thing that I would say, I agree with you on that is, is you, you won't see violence here if there is any sort of economic problems. Yeah. Like I give two examples of that, the, uh, the large uh, tsunami that happened in March uh, 2011. There wasn't a single act of, of, of criminality during that entire thing. 25,000 people, I think, were killed during that entire yeah. cities that were leveled. But also the one thing about here is that it, it, when going back to your point there, Ian, is, for example, in the United States, all it would take, you wouldn't even have to have an implosion of the economy. Try, just try and imagine 
you're looking at 2020 where they were they were fighting uh against uh for the for the love of of saint saint george floyd yeah a career criminal a career criminal drug addict with a heart condition totally fucking off his face on multiple drugs it couldn't breathe was having a basically a, a Drug he overdosed. overdosed. He overdosed. Yeah, and that's overdosed. what killed him. That's what the coroner said. Here in Japan, there, there never has been a welfare system unless you're physically or uh, uh, mentally incapacitated or you're elderly. So you're not going to, there, there's no jobs Japanese won't do. They don't have that. Well, Americans will, the Japanese won't do that job. I mean, the, right. the, the woman who cleans the, the building I'm living in, she's Japanese. The people working at McDonald's are Japanese. The garbage keepers are Japanese. So they don't have a concept of, of jobs people won't do because if you don't do a job you starve now you take a look at like the united states oh, you don't even need an economic implosion imagine turning off the ebt system for a week mm -hmm. that, that that the ghettos the ghettos don't get their 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 free food their stamps free food stamps what do you think would happen in the united states if right. one week the, the whole the whole country i mean it'd be like katrina burn. all over again except instantaneous you know, mass riots is what would happen yeah I mean, Katrina was bad enough, and that wasn't like the worst thing ever, right? Yeah. But most cities can be inundated, and they're fine. But Katrina happened, and and guess what? Mass looting, mass raping. They had to bring in uh, black water to keep the peace because the cops weren't enough. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> That's America. Yeah. yeah. Is that when do you guys think that this is going to happen? And sorry, I'm muted, man. Fucking air raid siren going off all the fucking time here. That's fine. I'll let somebody uh, else speak because I was speaking for a while. I, I think, I mean, I could see it happening w within the next two years, honestly. I mean, depending on what Biden does next, you never know. But but there is hope, right? I mean, it's not like all of America's No, there's no up. hope, oh, man. Stupid. These guys are too stupid. And the thing is, see, there's no second string, you know, crowd that can take over. They're all equally stupid. They're all cut from the same cloth. And so, you well, know, I, mean, I, I, I want to focus on you Europe a little bit. I want to focus on Europe because Europe, as far as I'm concerned, they are committing economic suicide. And yeah. for what? What exactly are they doing this for? I'm Slava Ukraini? Ukraine. <laughs> for what? I'm sorry? <laughs> for Slava Ukraini? You know what I mean? That's all they're, they care about. Like, that's what the, the governments care about. I don't think the people care about it too much. But the government's like, oh, we have, to, we have to struggle. Dude, are, and I mean, the, 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 the euro is fundamentally flawed. It yeah, is. there is no one single interest rate that makes any sense for Italy, yeah. for Greece, for 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 Spain, for Germany. That's you know, less than for, a dollar. For, you know, all the you know nineteen nations that are on the the uh, uh, twenty seven nations in the EU and and most of them on the euro. There's no one currency policy that makes any sense. And, you know, people have told me as well, it's the same thing in the United States. Well, no, you know, it's not. It's not. I, I feel like I'm, thing I'm listening United to States. myself when I, when I hear you, 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 you know, I told you, uh, Felix, I told Italy you, has sovereign I mean, bonds that literally no one would buy, but, you know, but the ECB. It, it, it's a backdoor bailout of Italy. And at some point, that's going to implode. I think a currency crisis starts in outside the U.S. I think it starts either in uh japan china or you know italy uh, i don't think it'll be europe. china they have a huge manufacturing base europe does not right i mean europe it killed most of its industries through imported from asia i mean for instance biofuels europe consumes a lot of that do they make any of it in europe no they destroy southeast asian jungles right rainforest tear right. them down and have us send all that crap over using our you know palm oil they're literally destroying my country so that they can have uh, clean carbon credits, basically. And <laughs> this seems to be the policy for importing anything. Uh, I mean, importing you know, limestone, importing marble. Yeah. Be, you know, be, you know be, because they're out of because they're nuclear forced and natural gas. <laughs> and, you know, and what, what Angela Merkel did with nuclear, you know, is... is and the is Greens are continuing. Basically stupid policy decisions ever. And the Greens are continuing it. I mean, you've got these people who are so insistent on shutting down nuclear energy. They're saying it's not an option, will never be an option, and that we need to go clean and build more uh, wind farms. And 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 they, it's like they don't have a real plan. It's like, I mean, these are guys who, who are saying, oh, well, I don't take showers daily. I use a washcloth, so you can too. I mean, that's how insane these people are. Oh, yeah. And, no, he's not, he's yeah. not making that up. I saw in Germany they were talking it's a real about thing. Washing, yeah. washing with a washcloth yeah. four parts of your body 
your yeah. anus, your genitals, and your armpits, and you'll be fine. And we need yeah. to do this in order to stick it to Putin. Yep. You know, and so, Putin's so, just laughing. It's like, what the hell, yeah. man? He's German. He's fucking what, German. What, what Ian is saying, I've read too. He's not even making that up, and it's not an exact. No, I know. I've read it too. Yeah, I, I, yeah it was Harbeck who said this. He, I mean, this yep. is a That's German him. government official, Harbeck. Mm -hmm. uh, who's currently the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, I think? No, 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 that's Bierbach. Uh, um, Harbeck is he's one of these fucking gremlins, man. And he's all these this. Greens. I mean, they, they are basically the de facto ruling party of Germany because of how much influence they have over every state. I mean, they're the prime ministers of every single German state. So they are effectively the rulers, even though they're not the chancellor, right? So they dictate the policy. It's insane. You, you guys know that the Green Party back in the 70s and the 80s were funded by the Soviets, right? Yep. And I've always That's thought right. that yep. um, that Putin and the Russians, they kept on feeding them money to do these policies because these policies only benefited Russia. It certainly didn't benefit the Germans. You know, I mean, if, mm -hmm. they, if the Greens were consistent with their ideology, they would say, yeah, you know, weighing everything, nuclear is the best option. It's the cleanest energy altogether compared to everything else. Uh, Mish, one of the reasons I dropped out of the financial blogosphere is because I got into the solar energy business. And I thought that the solar energy business, you know, you know, right here, <laughs> I thought the solar energy business was going to be like uh, this, this really romantic thing and I'd be doing good for the world and all this good shit. And it turns out to be, you know, once you get into it, you realize how incredibly corrupt it is, how environmentally damaging it is. The whole thing is a shit show. And uh, it's a scam. But it's a scam. Exactly right. And it's based yep. on people's desire to be virtuous. Because since mm -hmm. we don't have a religion anymore, we have to show each other that we're virtuous, good people. And so, you know, we, we're like, yeah, support the environment with, uh, you know, solar panels, which, of course, you know, produce all kinds of which are made with, with which are made with fossil fuels. Uh, the oh, weird yeah, thing about the damn solar panels is, is that, you know, we've got massive tariffs on on solar panels, you know, to try and build a solar panel industry here in the United States. Well, the weird thing is, if if China would offer us solar panels for free, we would be absolutely stupid to turn them down. We we would have all these jobs to install them, to put them in. You know, we we would be saving electricity if the things work. But no, that's not good enough. We have to make them here, but they're too damn expensive. It makes no economic sense to put these damn things on. You know, and, 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 and so here we are. These guys are just energy hypocrites here. It's worse in, in like, uh, like California has a bunch of taxes for people with solar panels. Like they're penalizing people for even owning them. Like, yes. Whoa. What? You're no. kidding me. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm Back not. up a second. I, I, give me the details on that because I hadn't heard of that. Oh, so there, there's like a tax that says that if you produce energy, right? Like, because, you know, when you have solar panels, you're giving back to the grid. Yeah, they're, they're taxing you on that. It's like, <laughs> wow, don't you want people to give free energy back to the state? No, no. There's something very you. similar happened to Spain, by the way. You, you know, they, they gave all of these, you know, credits for, you know, putting in, you know, wind power and solar and whatever. There, there, there was more energy going back, you know, than, mm. than, than these guys, you know, could handle. And, and the whole damn scheme imploded because they, they, they were offering, you know, more, more credits for building these devices that, that, than the power they put out. I mean, it was just stupid, you know. I, I can run up all of you on this. Uh, this has just come out this week in Canada. Uh, country I'm a little bit familiar with, and uh, they're building a massive new Ministry of Climate Change. Yep, and they got an armory. Oh, they got an yes. armory. they're yep. building not only an armory and in irrigation also, rooms. Yes. Yep. So, so you've got you've got, <laughs> you've got Trudeau. Okay, so it gets even better. So they they're building. They've created a new the Ministry of Climate Change. They're building. I heard a new about this. Gigantic complex, and yep. what they're doing at the same time is they're they're putting an armory in there mm -hmm. plus plus their interrogation rooms and this comes back from from what's happening in saskatchewan is where the provincial governments there the provincial government in saskatchewan the the, the uh, premier there is rejecting ottawa's force forcing the province of saskatchewan to reduce the nitrogen used in the farming industry now you've got to understand the way canada is it's for those of you who are in the united states 
uh, Saskatchewan is just north of the Dakotas, I think, or maybe Montana. It's just flat prairie land, and it's just all they do is farm there. There's nothing else, right? And so what's happened is the premier in Saskatchewan has said that any federal agencies that try and arrest people uh, and, and try to force these farmers to stop farming in the way they do, they're not going to cooperate. So Trudeau is like, not only that, I just saw the other day, is, I don't know if you guys remember earlier this year, the Freedom Convoy that went to um, yep. Ottawa. They, they arrested yeah. their leaders. They were confiscating their bank accounts. Like just, I, I mean, so Kim, Jong -un, Kim Jong Un would be proud. But now they've just shut down 39 separate companies that allowed their trucks to participate in that Freedom Convoy. And these yep. are trucks that are used to distribute food, used to distribute net, you know, needed It feels like goods. it's part of a plan, right? I mean, like it, they're doing this no. in the Netherlands as well with the nitrogen Yes, in the Netherlands as well, exactly. Yeah, it's a, they and now look they're at trying the to people, do it in Canada. They, they look at the people, at these farmers, not as fellow citizens. They look at them like no. foreign people. They, they look yeah. at them as if they're the conquerors. I mean, look at colonial policy in different places in Asia, in South Asia, in Africa, in, in Latin America. The whole issue was extraction. All they cared about were the, the conquerors, the, col the colonizers, cared about extracting resources. And they didn't give a shit about if it was good or bad for the, the people colonized. And the exact same attitude is happening here. It's neo-feudalism. And they look well, at themselves as a separate class that they have the right to extract and the right to impose arbitrary rules that satisfies their ego, their virtue signaling bullshit. And it hurts the people, and they don't give a shit about the people. I mean, that's basically yep. how I there's, see there's it. There's a reason for that, and I could just, if I could just chime in really quickly. Yeah, go. A little bit. I was just going to talk about Canada again, uh, because it's just, it's just, if you take a look at Canada, it's probably the best example I can think of in the world as a sandbox or an experimental, uh, just a laboratory for globalism. And, and part of the reason why you're seeing the fastest demographic change on the planet in Canada is like through immigration the, the the immigration into canada is is ba basically breaking down whatever social cohesion the country did have they want you two had, million a year yeah in a country two of million about, well, which was 30 million a couple years ago it'll be it's 30 from where where, where, where is, where, where is the anywhere immigration from uh well, economic exactly. migrants yeah, the, yeah but the, the point is, South, it yeah. is, is it, once you have these atomized communities so i saw this this uh this uh, article the other day, and it's in a place called Brampton, Ontario. I've never been there, to be honest, but the, they were interviewing a lot of the Indians that live there, and they said it was great because it's just like living in India, but with clean streets, good schools, and uh, good uh, good uh, uh, welfare systems. And I was thinking to myself, uh, you know, and they say, well, this might cause some racial tension. Well, it won't anymore because there's no white Canadians left. But the point is, is that what you're talking about resource extraction and the colonialism it's it's what it seems to me is this is happening in every single western country and mm -hmm. <clears throat> part of what you're talking about is the extraction and the atomization of the population is necessary in order to break it down they're doing it in ireland too i mean they're importing all of these oh, refugees yeah. from what yeah. syria sudan yeah. Yeah. africa all these african countries and putting them in villages that have no more than five thousand people so they get yeah. ten thousand refugees displace all the locals and have them yeah. run the place and it's like I, I, wow. ireland's what Killing five million it. people at best. yeah it's microscopic yeah yeah so the, yeah. I, I have a friend of mine his name is dave colin he runs a channel called computing forever i don't know if you guys know hey, how's it i going? love his channel yeah i, I love yeah, his channel. Channel. so long where's he at yeah yeah uh he's just on he's on alt tech now because he was you know because it, he, he covered the coronavirus and mm. But hey, uh, the point about uh, Felix, hey, Felix hang on, parenthetically, parenthetically, I just want to tell you, if you talk to Dave, tell him that I'm a huge fan and I'd love to have him on one of the round tables. Okay, you tell him because it, oh, he's right. a great guy. Sure. But I was talking Guys, to him I got to go. Ago. I got to get right. up. Uh, I'm actually traveling tomorrow. I'm going to get up at an ungodly hour in the morning. <laughs> well, it was great it's, meeting uh, you, buddy. Uh, Gonzo, uh, Ian, Felix, hey. it's nice meeting all of you. As you too, it's been a lot of fun. Sure thing, yeah, man. you take it easy, man. Nice to meet you. So you're going on, you said about uh, computing forever? What, what, yeah, yeah. what, what so happened there? He, he, yeah. he actually hooked me up to what's called the Ireland 2040 project. And they literally, their government is poised to and is zooming ahead with the idea of having, I think it's one out of three. It could even be more than that. Uh, by 2040, they want one out of three people in Ireland to be of an immigrant background and oh. this is going from literally they just they just finished the, the good friday accords in the 90s 
which ended a sectarian fight that had been going yep. on for decades over religion. And, you know, within 20 years of that, they're basically Welcome in, talking ISIS. about completely, <laughs> utterly transforming the demographics of their country forever. And, I mean, the fastest and, way they could do it is they could open up the uh, the borders to those uh, those those kids. I mean, they're still kids now. Those ISIS kids, right? The, the children of ISIS brides. Oh, Let them all no. in. I mean, integrate yeah. them. Yeah, no, see how no, it works no. out. No, no, it just seems it just seems ludicrous to me. And this is this goes back to I was talking about before is the sort of globalization, and uh, how Ireland Ireland is being used as a sort of as a jumping block into into Europe because they have very favorable tax rates for mm -hmm. globalist companies and i think this is why they're being pressured into basically doing this so I've, I've pretty much come to the understanding that almost all governments at least in western countries are are literally the enemy of the people they, they are they, they, they don't are. have no question they don't, yeah. they yep. don't have the interests of the people at heart they don't care about the people there they don't care about their welfare about their health about their sanity mm -hmm. i mean you can tell that with the covid lockdowns the last couple of years and I just find that that it's it doesn't matter which Western country you go to. It it's the same matter. In, in like Ukraine, yeah. right? I mean, Ukraine is selling out most of its farmland to Western interests. I mean, isn't mm. something like twenty percent of its uh, uh, agricultural se sector owned by uh, uh, Monsanto? Like, well, shit. it won't be anymore. <laughs> won't be anymore. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go back to the people. You know, like yeah, yeah. no, because what what happens is that see, the, people don't realize this about the yeah. Ukrainian situation is that see, everything that the Russians have so far captured and which they are going to integrate into Russia. Mm -hmm. I mean, no doubt about it at all. Well, yep. all this uh, this land is uh, the most productive in terms of agriculture in the world. and industry. Well, in the, yeah, world. apart from that, yeah. but you see, the majority of uh, of um, Ukraine's uh, crops, uh, uh, the, uh, in terms of volume, comes from the south and the east. And yep. the whole, uh, you know, the the whole I battle of it. the Donbass that's going on right now, that is basically the Ruhr. That that's like the industrial heartland of Ukraine, and the Russians have captured all of it. OK. Yep. And yeah, there's, uh, you know, been uh, war damage and all the rest of it. But you see in some of the cities like um, in, in uh, uh, Mariupol, yep. they, you know, they are rebuilding it so yep. fucking fast. And of course, you know, everybody, all the commentary in the West is like, oh, no, it's destroyed forever and it'll never <laughs> rise again. Dude, it's man, so I mean, they they reopened the like like the theater or the opera house or some shit like that. It looks yeah, beautiful, they man. And, right. and they're, I, they're I, rebuilding, man. And they're on rebuilding top of that, the place. Yeah. yeah. On top of that, they don't seem to realize that because of the oil, uh, the price of uh, oil spiking, right? The Russians are making more money now than ever before. So yeah. they're going to have the cash yep. to splurge on rebuilding this whole uh, area. And of course, they're going to want to rebuild it so that they can attract people both from Russia and those mm -hmm. Ukrainians who left and who want to come back to their, their towns and cities and whatnot. And so these people are, are going to have, they're going to be living in the lap of luxury, you know? Yeah. I mean, basically. And nobody seems to realize this. Nobody no. seems to... They got this to, fucking narrative, right? This fucking narrative that oh, Russia is going under. It's going to go bankrupt any day now. Everything's, uh, you know, it's the end of the world. Uh, Ukraine's going to be victorious. And, and these Nazis will push back these, these Mongol That's not lords. me. Uh, that's, that's not me. That's me. Air <laughs> Sirens. Air Sirens now. It's yeah, China's flying over. Uh, exactly. China's, <laughs> Chinese missiles are flying over. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, like you know, the you know, Russia has been on the verge of collapse for so long now that you know, if they keep on collapsing like this, oh, yeah. they're going to wind up at the English Channel, like, man. I mean, it's like what dude. they say with Putin, right? It's like, oh, he like ten years ago, he he's got heart problems, he's going to die. Look at the way he walks; he's got one arm down. There's no way he can lift an arm in the same video. He's like waving at people. It's like yeah. you know, he's like a former you know a KGB guy. They are all trained to walk like that to keep. One hand, you know, it's a, the, the gunslinger's gait, right? But literally a gunslinger, not, you know, the, uh, yeah. the sickness. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, look, oh, he's sick. The, oh, sure. The, the thing is, you know, the, uh, here, the, the rumors, what I find remarkable about this whole war that is that, see, the information war, goddamn, yeah. the Ukrainians are winning that war. The, oh, the, yeah. The, oh, the, I mean, they hired Edelman PR. Yeah. Not, not, not a lot of people know this, but Edelman's like one of the biggest uh, PR companies in the world, if not the biggest, and uh, they hired them. And it's yeah. all on uh, Mint Press News. Actually, has a whole list of yeah. all the PR companies really they're working article. with. Yeah, yep. it was a really yeah. good piece. That and really even Facebook, it all down. Facebook and Twitter have shut down some of these operations. Like, there's this new article today in the Washington Post detailing uh, America's propaganda efforts to. 
promote pro-Western, pro-U.S., anti-Russian, anti-Chinese narratives. And it was they, they were doing it in a very inauthentic way, basically spreading fake news using their CIA agencies like Voice of America. That's run by the CIA, by the way. Not a lot of people know that, but it is. Uh, yeah. Promoting their stuff and promoting any sort of um, narrative that was pro uh, pro U.S. involvement in Ukraine. So the Daily Beast, for instance, that would be such an example. I mean, everything that comes out of there, or from like the British press. You know, if you if you've read, say, the Daily Mail's coverage or the Sun, uh, its coverage on 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 this war, you'll see that it's it's insanely anti-Russian. They'll they'll demonize the Russians and then make claims about the ghost of Kiev and how he's a real person. Until the Ukrainians themselves are like, no, it's not a real. Uh, I, I love when Adam Kinzinger uh, tweeted out that picture of Sam Hyde <laughs> as the ghost of Kiev. That was fucking funny. That Samuel Hyde. Yeah, Samuel <laughs> yeah. Hyde. Heidsky. Yeah. Heidsky. Heidsky or some bullshit Heidsky, like yeah. that. It was, yeah. fun. it was fucking yeah. hilarious. You know, what and, a and, hero. Yeah, what a hero. But like, you know, he's involved in everything. But look, it, it, the thing is, see, the. the the problem I see it is that the majority of the people we are informed. We more or less get get a, have an, a fair idea. Yeah. But the hell is we're higher information, and we're not even like the smartest people on the planet. I mean, there's smarter people than us, but we at least have that surface level information that you yeah. know protects us from being lied to. Yeah, exactly. But the majority, the vast majority of people, have no fucking clue what's going yeah. on. And yeah. I realize that you know, back in the 2003 Iraq War, right. Uh, there wasn't the level of interconnectedness and social media and all the rest of it, of course. But see, mm -hmm. we would be on the on, on the people opposing the war, but yeah. the war would have gone on anyway. And I consider myself back in 2003, I would have been a normie because I was just I was involved in business of my own. I could care less about the whole uh, the mm -hmm. rock war. And I figured, well, if these fuckers say that, you know, we have to go to it. OK, I guess they have good reasons, you know, yeah. they're, they're not doing it for just stupid ass reasons. But now you I realize, it was stupid ass reasons. Exactly. And the war here in, in Ukraine, because look, on, on February 24th, that was the beginning of the Third World War. This was because the West, in yeah. all but weapons, in all but actual combat troops fighting the Russians, the West went to war with Russia. Oh, it is. is. It's this a is proxy war. war. Ukraine is not yeah, Ukraine proxy, anymore. Yeah. Now, this yeah. is a proxy war. Uh, Zelensky has been a stooge since he's been in office. But yep. the other thing I, I would have said is when you're talking about uh, the Iraq war and how you know, we didn't have the interconnectedness. We didn't have social media. We didn't have, you know, this kind of broadband internet. It's probably still dial up at the point. I would say though, the, the thing was, is I was shocked. I'm not going to lie at how easily manipulated people were with COVID. Just how oh, absolutely yeah. oh, how yeah. easily they were. But then when this war came along, when it's, you know, it's, it's blood, it's tanks, it's bombs. Like, I mean, you're getting, you're getting really, you can't get more real than that. I was just shocked how you see every self-righteous blue check Twitter shit lip with their little Ukraine thing talking about we're going to we'll do anything to stick it to Putler. Fuck Putler. And and just how you're just saying, uh, I think it was Ian or I can't remember if it was you, Gonzalo, who said, you know, the Ukrainians are winning the information war. Yeah, it's just it incredible. Like ghost, the ghost of Ukraine has, has now shot down and destroyed uh, 30 million aircraft single-handedly with a pocket knife yeah, right? yeah and um yep. and people are buying it and you and all of these outlets like vox and the young turks and uh you know whatever they're all the huffington post they're all running with it and i just find it mm -hmm. incredible that it's been this easy but then again i mean you take a look at it anyone who basically talks against the narrative they're either shut down well first of all they're demonetized but then yep. they're just shut down you know like just utterly and completely silenced. I mean, Robert Kennedy Jr., uh, the son of the uh, senator, uh, the brother of John Kennedy, his stuff was just completely removed from all social media because he's been he's been an anti-vaxxer for about 20 years. There's uh, I'm not sure if it's because one of his children was harmed by vaccinations, but you've got literally a guy mm -hmm. with the name of Robert Kennedy getting the platform from social media because of his stance on back look at andrew tate more recently right andrew tate yeah. like like i mean you could say you know like okay i don't agree with his views on women whatever you know but guess what he was banned for it wasn't because he was talking about women it wasn't because he was you know trying to scam people or sell people in some scam no it's because of comments he made about transgender children he said that you know it's fine if you want to be trans it's fine if you want this lifestyle this is for you i'm not going to judge you you know do whatever you want i don't hate you but don't teach my kids this stuff. 
That's yeah. what he said. Perfectly that is what reasonable. got him banned. That's literally Perfectly. what got him banned. It's like such a basic, basic fucking thing to say, and that's what gets him banned. He and says this, a and this stupid ten, t- ten years, years ago fine. would be common sense of 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 literally right. everyone. You know, yeah. received common sense. So we're we're literally living in clown world. Mm-hmm. At this yeah. point, you know, they didn't, they didn't, didn't get him for any other reason, you know, like it, it'd be one thing if they got him on some dumb comment he made about, say, saying rape is OK or something that. Yeah. OK, fine. That banned the guy. Yeah, but, but he, I don't know, man, even if he said that, I mean, right. So what? I'd be, yeah, I'd be opposed bad to ideas by banning people's speech, But instead, right? it's like he's they're, they're banning him for things that 90 percent of the world thinks. And it's yeah. like, wow, really? More, wow, you more. This? I would say 95 percent. Look, you yeah. know, I, as I, I'm a father of two small children. I see these videos of these children, uh, not my children, of course, some yeah. crazy people's kids who are, you know, they're a boy and dressed up as a girl or vice versa. And, mm-hmm. and everybody's celebrating. And I'm like, dude, they are basically, you know, uh, trying to turn them into catamites. Into, into yep. uh, you know, I, I actually can't say this part that I want to say, but I think that you all get the picture. It yeah. is just perverse. It is truly perverse. Absolutely. And this is late stage decadence. This is late state, late stage empire. Just, you know, just mm-hmm. because oh, the oh, barbarians it, 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 smash it, it, through. Imperial late Rome has nothing on us. Oh, no, oh, yeah. no, no. The fucking are, pikers. Germany, Germany has nothing on and, us. And fucking, you know, like, uh, uh, everybody's like, oh, we have to be tolerant of them. And, and tolerance is just another word for apathy, in my opinion. I mean, Aristotle said it best. He says that tolerance is the virtue of a dying empire. And that's exactly where we are right now. America much, is a dying empire. Yeah. And also, the thing is, see, it, it, it's or, or you, people just, forget what the word act, tolerance act, actually means. You can means. tolerate something if you don't right. have to accept it, though. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Right. Well, and if you like, like Andrew Tate, if you want to do that for yourself, fine. But I mean, don't push this on kids. And, and like mm-hmm. both of you have the said, 90% of, of the world would agree with you. And yep. if you took it outside the Western world, it'd be 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, right? and, and, but then in Russia. You, what fly? I mean, not even in Soviet Russia did they did they right? Yeah, they were like a process. degeneracy. It's pure degeneracy. Everybody noticed it. Everybody knew until yeah. now, I guess. Yeah, now it's fine. I mean, in in America, <laughs> like what the hell? Like what and, happened? And, I mean, people, you know, they kept pushing the boundaries. It's that slippery slope fallacy again, right? I mean, it's the, not the, a fallacy. The evangelical really. Christians were right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah it turns they out they were. were. Yeah. They like, were oh, we just right want to get then... married, and then afterwards, it's like, oh, uh, we we also want to, you know, castrate children. Uh, yeah. What? Yeah, and that's what it is. <laughs> and, and, and there's there was a big. It was quite interesting. There was a large. It's on my Twitter. There was a large demonstration in in. Favor of zoophilia in Germany. The other yes, day. yeah, it's ongoing yeah. Too. It's a thing. It's a oh, thing. The, the, the yep. slippery slope. It's turning into oh, yeah. a water slide. You know, yep. like it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I, I forgot it, about that. I tweeted about yep. it actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm like what the hell, man? Now, now now we're into, now. I can't have a loving relationship with a woman, but this Labrador and me share the most. <laughs> Oh, disgusting. God, yeah. oh uh, I, you want me you want me to top it for disgusting okay I'll, I'll do it you know they just discovered in France the first uh, you know human to animal uh, uh, m- uh, monkeypox transmission guess where they found the monkeypox on the poor animal on uh, its, its anus. assholes yeah. oh, of course no. someone fucked it yeah I, mean, oh, I got it temporarily Christ. suspended on Twitter for, for, for calling <laughs> yeah. it a gay STD yeah yeah, I was like, yeah. it's a gay STD, you're, you're, you know. I mean, it only transmits between. I'm mean, not only, but you know, mostly. But it is being them. transmitted mostly. And like, I was proven right. Just days later, there was a study on NBC News. They were like, yeah, it's a, it's an STD. It doesn't matter <laughs> if you're right or not, because the thing is, is all of the people that came out and said we're kind of concerned about what's happening with the, the rollout of COVID, the yeah. basically sweeping changes to human rights and our ability to choose medical procedures for ourselves. Not a ban, 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 mm-hmm. ban. And now you're seeing like even the CDC turning around and changing things. All of the blue checks that we're talking about how, you know, people that uh, aren't vaccinated shouldn't be allowed to leave their home or even more, they should be put into, you know, internment camps. Now yeah. they're saying, well, you know, we got to maybe, maybe live with it, you know, and maybe get oh, yeah. forward. But at first. And, yeah. you know, oh, and I myself, that, guys, it, it, I had COVID this month and, and I, it's like having the flu, but there are a little bit of differences to it. I mean, I had some issues with my, my nose and whatnot. But I mean, if you look at all the statistics, I was not anywhere near the danger zone, and I had the sniffles and the coughs for you know ten days. 
you know, and I'm yeah, alive. I you. survived I, the I summer added of death. Last October, uh, no big deal. It was. I just survived a cold. the summer of death. I never had it. You know? yeah. I don't wear a mask. Do oh, oh, you evil man! Don't work. You're evil don't man! Work. You're you're yeah. not part of the program. You're you're one of yeah. the infidels. Yeah, no yeah, masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ! It, it's so no funny. Masks, they, no they, they think masks actually work. I mean, there's no like Fauci himself is like, yeah, they don't they don't work. You have to like wear them properly in a certain way, like, and, and you need to be really completely sealed up, right, for them to actually have any function. But then afterwards, everybody's like, no, we must wear a mask. And, 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 and they take their fucking handkerchief, put it around their face, and suddenly they're safe. You really think this is going to protect you from the world's worst virus? Are you kidding? Like, what is wrong with you people? Like, you, Oh, but also, have you like noticed that Politico, Politico yesterday uh, came out with a big article uh, you yep. know, talking about uh, Trump was the one who pushed the vaccine mm-hmm. at warp speed. Oh, what's oh, that so telling now you? it's Trump's fault. It's Trump's fault. Yeah, Trump's now, yeah, yeah. because, it's because what's happening now. is that the, 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 the yeah the 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 yep. shot is getting so many negative effects that yeah oh, they're changing the narrative. I, I yep. predicted this. I Trump's said fault. it. I said it when they started blaming. <laughs> when they started saying uh, you know Trump was the one responsible for the shot, it's yep. because the deaths and the injuries are so numerous that they can't hide it anymore. And dude. Yep. People are dropping dead left and they right. Are. Some cyclists, kids. cyclists. Kids. Yeah. yeah, and kids. guys like, are in really have good heart shape. problems. Yeah. yeah, and they're normalizing Athletes. it. They're saying it's totally normal for a twenty-five-year-old <laughs> to drop dead of a heart attack. What the fuck are you talking about, yeah. man? No, it's I not mean, normal. I mean, Len Bias was, you know, the the one guy who dropped dead at a young age, and he was like on coke, wasn't he? I mean, that was yeah, his, he his was. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. he was the one guy, and now you're seeing it all over the goddamn place. All over the place. Right? I, yeah. saw, oh, man. I mean, it, like for the longest time, they claimed that it had zero impact on your, uh, if you're a woman, right? It had zero impact on your menstruation, like none. There's no evidence. And now it turns out it is, it, it does fuck with your menstruation. It makes you not menstruate, or it makes you menstruate extra for like two weeks longer, right? Or it, nonstop. And there are some it people screws where, you, I right? Mean, it, it literally screws yeah. you up. Like I know a lot yeah. of women who are like who who were who received their first shot of vaccine and then it got all messed up and, and now they're like, Yeah, I don't want my second shot. I don't want to make this worse. Like yeah. I'm waiting for this to heal up. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Well, also there's a, another thing that people are starting to notice, but really quietly, which is the drop in natality. Because they're noticing yep. that in countries where there was a mm-hmm. lot of uh, of uh, um, of the shot, right? Yep. There has been a noticeable drop in live births, and that's it's right. Starting Norway to people, and and yeah, and it's it's Sweden. increasing month over month. The mm-hmm. the deficit. If they can't explain it. Yeah, some well, people are like, oh dude, well, you man, know, what the fuck you think? You think it was the fucking cornflakes or the global warming did it? Because yeah. that's the other excuse, you know, global warming is causing heart warming. attacks, man. Fuck you. I man. read that. That was like global warming is more likely to cause heart attacks. It's like, really? Yeah, what the you, hell are you talking you think about? Half a degree, man? half a degree of of Celsius is gonna cause heart attacks. Are you fucking kidding me? So, yeah. like, if they were to go to a warm country, they would suddenly die. No. Nonsense. Yeah, I mean, are, are you dropping dead there in Malaysia and Japan? No. Are, are like people just in the warm street, just here. like passing out and dying? Yeah. Are people in Texas and Florida all just dropping dead? You know? No. Oh, of course on, not. Man. And it, it, it's just it's just fucking absurd. And the thing is, see, uh, um, you know, the people who write this shit, I have to ask yep. seriously. You know, what are they thinking? Don't they realize that they are truly selling their souls? I, mean, I think I think some of them are actually mentally ill, like like Taylor Lorenz, right? You know, she's. Like legitimately mentally ill, she calls herself disabled now, and she refuses to go anywhere without a mask. Well, uh, Felix, gets... mute yourself because your your the alarm is. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. holy crap! Sorry, dude. Sorry. Yeah, Japanese thanks. crime, right? Crime in Japan. <laughs> Yakuza blew up a dude, but no, no uh, they're, they're looking to... for Felix, man. They can't oh, yeah. find him. You know. They're, they're to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back to Taylor Lorenz, though, I mean, she uh, she's like railing against. Uh, 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 um, like uh, organizations and conventions, you know, like she'll go to some convention and whine about the fact that no one's wearing a mask or, or that she saw one person without a mask and then she'll try to like, you know, create a fuss around it. I, I'm sure the Washington Post is not thrilled about it because they don't let her run these stories. But, you know, she's always going on about how they don't care about people like me. I'm disabled. I'm very <laughs> susceptible to the virus. It's like, bitch, you never got the virus. What are you oh, talking by about? By the way, for the chat who don't know, Taylor Lawrence is this Washington Post reporter. And she was the one who docks libs of TikTok. Yep. And libs of TikTok is a very famous uh, TikTok channel and, and, and uh, Twitter channel. I think it's Facebook, too. 
that basically yep. the, the, the woman who runs it doesn't do anything. She just shows these absurd mm -hmm. videos of liberals, <laughs> libs of TikTok, yeah? And yep. they're all fucking nuts. I mean, she dude, holds a mirror up to them, right? She holds yeah, a mirror up to them yeah. and they hate it. They're like, no, no, we're not like this at all. It's like, yeah, you are. This is you. Yeah. Look at yourself. And, and anybody sensible looks at those videos and, and either yep. screams with laughter or mm -hmm. says, what is wrong with these people? And yep. that is why they're pissed off at her. And that's why yep. Taylor Lawrence went and doxed her. And, and went and knocked on the doors on her family's homes, you know? Yeah, like, and there's like video of there's in New York video. and all. Knocking at the doors and be like, "Are you okay with the fact that your niece is is, <laughs> is is harassing trans people?" And it's like, "What? What are you talking about?" I yeah. just had to look. I just had to look this woman up. She already looks like she's completely insane, she and uh, she she just gave her she gave an interview uh, in 2022 where she said that she has severe yep. PTSD from experiencing online harassment. Oh yeah, man, so then I must be yeah. psychotic at this point with the harassment yeah, I've done, same. man. I got yeah, my own Kiwi Farms threat. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Kiwi Farms. You know, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, it's just I, these these kinds of people. The funny part is, is they all have these platforms on supposed. Well, in YouTube, they call them authoritative sources. Oh they yeah, get out of order to make boosts, right? I mean, yep. if you if you if you go back oh, to like 2016. Like people like myself or, or Sargon of a cat or whoever, I mean, we could we could outpace any outlet oh, yeah. that was out there uh, yeah. until our channels all got like basically thrown into the, the toilet and mm -hmm. they put up like MSNBC and, and, and CNN and whatnot. But then you look at the people that are actually doing the reporting and they're just nuts. They're just they they're just complete fucking psychos. It's just not a one off, right? She, like. I'm looking at the uh, one of the Canadian uh, publications. They're uh, they're oh, what do you call it? They're COVID journalists or whatever you want to call these people, right? She's nuts. She's like a hypochondriac. The same with the New York Times. Their uh, a COVID reporter is the same way. I mean, uh, she's this Asian chick. I forget her name, but she's always going on about about how she wears masks in the house. She makes her kids wear masks to bed. It's like what? Oh what? God. Who the fuck oh does this? God. And and these yeah. are the people telling us. The news right they're reporting on COVID itself it's like these are like the least trustworthy people i want a neutral source not someone who's crazy and thinks that they're going to get COVID from staring at someone from across the room jesus christ okay. and you look I, at I, I Lawrence, and you know, know, right, like like a, like, a, like a future wine mom with a dozen cats you know yep. that they're gonna find her you know mm -hmm. that she accidentally overdosed on wine and xanax <laughs> and her body was eaten by her cats that is she lies about her age you know what she lies about her age that, that's one of the funny things like she claimed to be 30 years old for like the longest time turns so out she's like 46 or 47. you're kidding oh, yeah. no, no i'm not, not kidding age, mid -40s. She know how old she is there's there's all kinds of numbers for it yeah it's funny because i put her name in and like the fourth the fourth uh, thing that came back is Taylor Lorenz know your meme? And yep. so supposedly she says that she's been public, she's publicly stated that she's been targeted for multiple harassment campaigns <laughs> since she began her career in 2014. So the, the immediately upon starting her career as a journalist, I guess, uh, she's she's constantly being harassed. Constantly. She harasses people in real life, like you know Martin Shkreli, right? The uh, farmer bro. She okay, harassed yeah. him at a bar. He was drinking at a bar, minding his own business, and she walked up to him. After he was out of jail? Uh, th no, no. This was like uh, before he went to jail. Yeah, okay. she was yeah harassing him for a story. So he that was that was her ten years life. ago. That was like ten years ago, wasn't it? Uh, maybe around uh, twenty sixteen. Maybe yeah. No, it Something. was earlier than that, wasn't it? I mean, Farmer Bro know. was like way back. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll look like it up he wasn't quick. in jail at that point, right? He didn't go to okay. jail for like the Hillary thing. You know, he made fun of her hair or something. Right? So it's going to cut her hair. But uh, no, like he, Taylor was actually actively stalking the dude. Taylor is a sick person. She's a sick <laughs> Hold human on. being. I'm, I'm going through all of her different sort of uh, chaotic allegations against people. Yeah. She said that in February 2021, uh, she she tweeted that tech entrepreneur Mark Anderson. I have no idea who that Mark is. Mark Andreessen, yeah. Okay, you lied the, about him. She said yeah, he used the word lie. retarded, yeah, right? Oh, thank and you. He, I was just going to ask you the R slur. I don't even know what the R slur yeah, R -slur, is. Yeah, retarded. Apparently, that's a uh, slur now because you know, ah, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know. You, People you, are fucking you, retarded. You, that's why. No, yeah. no, no, no. Don't don't uh, say the R word because it's become like the new N word. 
yeah. which I think uh, is, is ridiculous. It's because ridiculous. I've met, I've met people who are um, mentally uh, deficient. Challenged. Okay. It, yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, people who are genuinely, you know, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they have issues. And, they got and issues, the thing yeah. is, the, they often use the word, number they one. Do. They don't mind. They don't care. You know, they don't, they, yeah. they've got bigger fish to fry, okay? Yeah, like, so, like trying to not shit themselves, you know? And, yeah, see, see, and like, see, like, I'm being a bigot word, here. Idiot, I'm being ableist. The, the word idiot, the word <laughs> imbecile, okay? Yeah. Where do you think it came from? It came from, from Same this. Thing. Moron the came term. from that. Yeah, yeah exactly. moron came from that. But retard and, and also means something floating that can grow. It also yep. means yeah, retarded. Yeah, in the yeah. That, that so, for retarded, example, my, my plants have been growth. retarded yeah. by the pesticides or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But you, you, know, you, you can't you can't use it anymore. And and the, the thing is this this policing of the language. And by the way, it's it's a fairly effective strategy. I, I recently had an interaction with uh, Jimmy Wales. Uh, you mm -hmm. know the the guy. Who yeah, yeah, no, the Wikipedia, Wikipedia guy. Media. Yeah, yeah, and the the question I had and chat, you guys can help me out here. Uh, you know, some of you, if you're interested, you know. I, I hate to sound like an asshole, but I've done like several things. I published multiple novels. I've had YouTube uh, YouTube channels and all kinds of shit and and whatnot. I was you know during my last week, I was all over the international press, and they yep. have uh, uh, suppressed my uh, page. You know, I'm wow. I'm unpersoned, okay. And I've been interacting with this guy, uh, basically saying, you know, why why are you suppressing true information? Okay, I'm not notable. I mean, and and there are people who are on Wikipedia, and I, I I hate to sound like a complete asshole. I don't mean it in an assholeish way, but there are people who are just like, dude, why the fuck is this person has that? Right, they, they, they pay nobody, some PR right? guy to put them on there, right? That's what yeah, they exactly, do. They literally exactly. pay a PR and, guy. And so the issue is, you're suppressing information so that people don't have a complete picture of reality. That's what's really going on. Hold on a and, yep. and this really, guy, you know, at one point, he, he, he said to me, he, 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 he said to me, you know, uh, you know, first of all, don't have this aggressive tone with me. And I'm like, dude, I'm a middle-aged fuck. I can use you don't give a fuck. language I want, man. Yeah, right. And if it's, you're not going to tone police me, what the fuck are you talking no. about, boy? Yeah, you're not a teenage and, you know, girl. Fuck yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. But it, it, yeah. it is a strategy, you know, of tone policing, of controlling mm, your language. Say nicer, please. So don't say the things that are true. Because, see, have you ever seen them suppress a channel that talks about flat earth? Have you ever seen them say, say no. you know, demonetize and deplatform a flat earther? No, because everybody no. knows it's stupid. They only yep. deplatform the people who are telling the truth. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting on a hobby horse, man. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. They go after people who are a threat to the narrative. People like Alex Jones, for instance. Stefan Molyneux. Yeah. Stefan Molyneux, yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah. What, what, what happened? You go through a whole, a whole list of them. Oh, it's, yeah. It's only on one side of the aisle as well. Oh, no, shocker. Donald Trump. Shocker. Donald Trump. Donald motherfucking Trump. No, yeah. No. yeah. When, the, when they deplatform <laughs> Trump, that was it. All bets are off. Anybody yeah. can be deplatformed yeah. for saying anything they true. Anyone's fair game. Yeah. Yep. And, 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 look, and, and, and that's the... The fact that people didn't have a complete hissy fit over Donald Trump being deplatformed, that was a sign. That yeah, I think that people, people have gotten used to it, though. Don't have the said normalization. We're in yeah. stage yeah. four, right? We're in mm -hmm. stage four yeah, of, uh, of Yuri Bezmenov's uh, uh, list of, of, of the destruction of society. Or stage four is normal now. It's normal. Hang on, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to get more coffee, but I'm still here. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it, it's stage four. Yeah, Yuri Bezmenov, man. I mean, for all his flaws and whatnot, you know, mm -hmm. he was right on the money. You know, what he I mean? was. Yeah, it, it's but fucking in that case. Yeah, it's, it's exactly fucking, what's happening. Yeah, you know, you you watch that interview from what was it, eighty, eighty two, something like that. Yep, more like spot that. on. He was spot yep. on the demoralization of the people. And I think yep. that the worst part is that the resistance is so demoralized. The people who are dissidents, they they yep. don't have the stomach to go up against these people. Because you know, because they don't it. have they don't they don't have anybody to back them up. I mean, that's how it feels like. Yeah, the establishment has everything from BlackRock, which owns everything, from yeah. you know to Hollywood, they to the banks, to the payment process, the power companies the in the UK. They're the yeah. ones making all the money. Yeah. Airbnb, everything. So I mean, if you're a dissident, you've got nothing and no one to back mm -hmm. you up. And, and even mean, your followers is, don't I, even back you up because no, they think no. you've got it. Right? They think yeah. you've got it. So you're just st sitting there looking at your Twitter feed or your YouTube video or whatever, you know, and you're like, wow, I'm like, I feel so alone right now. No one's backing me up. And when they do it, it's in private. You know, yeah, like, yeah, where exactly. the fuck are these people? No, no, exactly. Yeah. So this is the thing. I mean, there's there's no 
there's no room there's no room for dissidents at this point and the reason yep. there isn't is because there is no organizational ability for that to to, to happen and, and the thing mm-hmm. is is you look at anyone who goes against it in a hard 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 way they all get destroyed and the thing yeah. is, is they're not just coming after say your twitter or youtube they're coming to financially ruin you they do you know? I mean, and, trudeau and did it trudeau yeah, did it exactly. anyone who donated money had their accounts locked i mean these yeah, are people absolutely. who didn't even attend the protest they donated money to the cause they saw a good cause and they got their accounts frozen well they and also they, they also sent yeah. police people that were even on any of these uh any yep. of these groups these uh, go find me the, no, 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 not even the GoFundMe stuff. Stuff like a, a pro, uh, one of these oh, yeah. groups that they right. just did a, a like the Facebook on a post. Groups. They had police coming to their house and saying, yep. well, we've noticed that and you have been journalists were helping them. Right? The journalists were helping them. They doxed everybody. Yeah. The journalists, I'm not going to go. Like, I'm actually, the thing is, is everyone tries to make fun of Trump saying that the journalists, these embedded corporate mainstream media journalists are the enemy of the people. He's not wrong. They, no, no, they are, are the enemy of the people. They are the enemy of the people in every way, shape, and form. Yep. And they are there not to inform people, but to basically corral them and make yep. them more yep. docile cattle for the establishment. That's and right. anyone who thinks that she knows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she absolutely. Anytime a, you know, a, a media personality or any time a media company tries to ask me for any kind of interview or any kind yes. of nothing, yeah. it's like Go, it's basically like get radio silence from me i don't even tell them to fuck off i just get yeah just, just getting radio silence not yeah. even worth the responding yeah. to you i mean no, i'm actually, a fucking what wolf. i do what i'm I do a wolf. Is, i don't uh, interact I, with sheep dogs no what i i did like for instance the daily beast approached me to do a hit piece right and yep. i said um sure what questions do you have and, and let's do this through lawyers that was the first thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because nice. I got the money for lawyers, so fuck yeah. it. Why not? You know, I mean, yeah, why still, not? Right? I'm yeah. Paying these fuckers five hundred an hour, so you know, one more, one yeah, less. Yeah, might as well. Really matter. So the the thing is, see, um, the the Daily Beast approached me, and uh, I said, sure, we can do this through your uh, through lawyers. What's the name of your attorney? And there they were like, oh, and I said, well, you know, and and the guy sent me like. 13 pages of questions and every single oh one of God. them was leading every single one of, of them course. and i posted it on my telegram channel when i had access to my telegram channel um and um and, and what you call it, i posted it all there and just to have my audiences laugh at this shit because it was so transparently obvious right yeah and you know, a narrative. Any, anything that you say to these people no matter how reasonable, they will twist it around. It's it's pointless to have any kind of conversation with anybody in the mainstream media, and certainly people like the Daily Beast. Oh, the other one that did a big hit piece on me was the Bulwark. I'm anti oh. okay? Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah uh, you know, it, it, it's that, you know, like whenever you laugh at something, they automatically- Wait a minute, why are you anti-Semitic? Is it you, uh, you're a Holocaust denier as well? No, it's not even that, you know, it's like, I mocked some. Um, you laugh at a joke. I, I laugh at a joke, basically. I laugh yeah. at a joke. You know, it's four chan shit because somebody yeah, is fucking funny. Shit. It's not serious. I mean, this is stuff no. that that Jewish comedians make fun of all the time, and and yeah, it's fine exactly. to laugh at. Exactly. Like, I mean, I see Asian comedians making fun of Asian culture. It doesn't mean that people laughing at it are racist. No, it's just a funny joke. It's it's, yeah, a, it's something you share an anecdote. I got vowels at the end of my first and last name, motherfucker. I'm as spick as you can get. And you know, when I hear a spick joke, <laughs> yeah. I think it's funny. I, I think it's yeah. very funny. Like, what, yeah. I'm, like, I'm, I got yeah. this joke, right? I mean, they, they, they call you guys Latinx. I mean, what are you going to call oh. us Chin X now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're Chin yeah, It's a funny man. joke. Yeah, yeah, I'm Chin yeah, X now. Yeah, really called Chin X for punching the face, and but you know, like that's like that's the joke, right? Chin X, I mean chinks, and right. I, yeah, being yeah, Asian, yeah. I can yeah. say that. Yeah. But they'll be like, "Oh, you made an anti-Asian joke." No, no, dumbass. It's not an anti-Asian joke. The joke is that you guys keep making up fucking words, and we hate it. Yeah. No, and the worst part oh, I mean, is they, they have lots of jokes like that here in Latin Japan. X hates Latin X. Okay. Yeah. Every single one. Yeah. Okay. Not a and, sing, I've not I have not known a single Latinx person who liked the term or even knew of it. Like mm. they're like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Latinx. Exactly. Yeah. It's just and fucking it's, white college kids, you know? They're like, I know better. I, I I know that this is good for your Latinx because you know we want to get rid of the the, the, the cultural imperialism of white people that they forced this on you. You actually had a million genders before they colonized you. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck are you talking about? I my fucking answers just came from Portugal. Fuck off. Yeah. No, yeah. 
No, it, but the thing is, see, this shit, it, it, it seems to me, and you guys correct me if, if I'm wrong or if you agree, that this is all rising up to some sort of crescendo, some, some moment yeah. of just explosion. Because this mm-hmm. shit, we, we can't continue at this pace. You know, yeah. something's got to give. It feels like we're a Ferrari culturally, civilizationally. We're in a Ferrari and we have floored <laughs> yeah. it. And we have decided to unbolt the steering wheel. And we're just mm-hmm. flying at about a thousand miles an hour. And we're going to hit about 10, 10 feet ahead of us. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know what that wall is going to be. I think Russia is that wall. I think Russia is that wall. What do you mean? I mean, like, Russia's going to win, you know? Oh, it, it's going to win. They are winning. You know, it's no yeah, they are winning, right? I mean, it's like it, that, that is set in stone. And, and, and right now, the West is committing cultural suicide, not just cultural suicide, but financial suicide as well. Like, everything is just heading there all at once, hitting this massive wall called Russia, right? Culturally, Russia is good. It actually has diversity. It's got real racial diversity and people are treated equally. Wow, not like given favor based on their race. Wow, that's like actual equality. Holy shit. And they don't talk about race very much. Wow, isn't that what we want? Oh, apparently not. Now we got to talk about how black we are. I'm 5% black. Uh, therefore, I get 5% reparations where your ancestors slaves. No, but I, you know, I felt the, uh, the, I have the adjacency of slavery. No, shut the fuck up. Like, I mean, that <laughs> seems to be what America's turning into. Everybody's yeah. got this, this, this victimhood mentality. Like, oh, my ancestors were oppressed by your ancestors. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, it's a, the victim mentality. What happened is that yep. when we started with the, with the, with the civil rights movement, right? And of fucking affirmative of, action. Of claiming people who are victims and we have to fix it. Then everybody realized, yep. hey, you know, if I claim I'm a victim, I get mm-hmm. dibs. So I'm going to start yeah. claiming I'm a victim so I can get some extra grub or extra money or extra whatever, yeah. you know? That's why everybody is that she's disabled. Victim. Right? Everybody. She's, like, she's disabled. Like, what is what is disabled about her besides a fucking brain? No, oh, she's disabled because she's uh, extra sensitive to COVID. How would she even know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, disabled. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> The thing is, it, it is it is the mark of a weak people. Yep. That, you know, and they the, celebrate it. They wear it like a badge. I'm like, I'm Latinx. I'm paraplegic. I'm this. I'm that. I'm this. I'm lesbian. I'm trans. I'm like, I've got 37 different genders. I got people living in my head. Uh, I'm, I'm neurodivergent. Like that's a new thing, right? They're they're claiming that people with schizophrenia should not be treated with any sort of medication or even given therapy. That we need to to affirm. Their schizophrenia. We need to affirm their 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 unreality. We or, need to or affirm their... their pedophilia. Don't you know? Yeah. Is anyone, is anyone surprised by this? I mean, th- this is again Madness. the water slide that the slippery slope that's turned into the water slide. I mean, we're basically yep. going to have to affirm every mental illness is out there now. So uh, they that's, are that's, the, that's why I bring it back to the issue. You know, how exactly is this going to happen? Because look, I think that we're all pretty much in agreement that Europe is going to go. Tits up this winter. Yeah. I mean, this winter is oh, yeah. fucking hundred percent. And and people are not the, the riots have... and shit. Yep. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. you, you know, it's insane to be in Europe at this time. You got to get the fuck fucking out of there. I mean, Germany Eurobos, is talking about surveillance now. They're put. They're what? saying they're, they're putting. Germany is putting surveillance on the people who are planning to not pay their bills because there's like this growing movement of people not wanting to pay their power bills, right? Because I mean, why yeah. the fuck should they? Yeah, sure. and they're putting surveillance on it to, for these protests that are coming, I think, next month. And they're saying that we're watching out for extremists. It's more like they're going to put well, well, some fucking agents provocateur in there and have them also, they're, they're labeling anyone who disagrees with the current political uh, narrative with regards to the Ukraine and yep. how we all have to make sacrifices, destroy our, our life savings, you know, completely they're become an people. impoverished nature. The government already, the, the current regime there is already labeling these people as extremists. Oh, yeah. So the ex- and they like, jail so, people. So, so yeah. Are- so if you say, if you say on, you know, say, let's say on, on social media, I really think that this is a bad idea for us to shoot our country in the foot by banning Russian energy. So we are basically mm-hmm. all impoverished. Our businesses are collapsing. Our industry is collapsing. The euro is collapsing. We can't feed our children. Oh, that's an extremist right there. Yep. You know, and then and then I'm sure there'll be laws created in order to deal Oh, there's already laws. I mean, they, they arrested a journalist living in, in, in fucking the Philippines, the German a German journalist, and one in the Donbass was summoned basically for, for arrest because she was saying things that were uh unfavorable to Ukraine, right? I, like, I know the girl you're talking about, she's a young girl. I, I saw I saw that about her, yeah. And they yeah. also seized her bank accounts. They did, it's, and her father's yeah. too. Her father's bank account got seized. 
Because and all yeah. she was doing yeah. was walking Alina, around. Alina, wasn't she? what's your name? She uh, Alina. Around. I can't remember her name. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I know what you're who you're talking about. Yeah, yep. she is is like. Oh, and by the way, uh, uh, parentheses. Yannick is in the chat. He's moderating. Uh, chat, be nice. Alina Lip, thank you, chat. Uh, Alina That's Lip, yeah. L I P P. Uh, and by the way, I uh, just want to say to Yannick, thank you so much for uh, uh, moderating. He's out in Thailand. He's living, you know, the great life there with his girlfriend, having a high old time. He's been, we've been in touch, and he's been like showing me stuff there. It's just fantastic. It, that seems like a good place to go because if you're mm -hmm. European, you're fucked. Alina Lin, oh, yeah. she's just some German girl. Uh, apparently, I, 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 it seems this is what I infer because she's never actually mentioned this, but apparently her her uh, mother might be um, might be Russian or something like that. And but I, I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm 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 just saying because she had an interview with her mother and in, in Ukraine or in not Germany, but it doesn't matter. The point is, see, she is just reporting what she sees yeah. and she's getting financially deplatformed. That's fucking crazy. This is shit like we, we would say mm -hmm. that the Nazis did, you know. I mean, I mean Felix, it's the Germans you, after all. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, man. And you know, in Germany, the other thing that they're doing is that they're setting up these, uh, I forget the name that they gave them, but it's basically these big rooms that are going to have heating during the winter. So if people are yeah, too cold. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because they can't I mean, afford their own heating. They're, they're talking about all uh, countries across Europe, including the UK, of having rolling blackouts. Yep. So like, like planned blackouts. So it's not like, you know, just that power goes off in an hour it comes back on because of a thunderstorm or something they're doing what texas be, did during the like, winter say, thing yeah so it's yeah. going to be exactly like that they're going to say okay from eight o'clock today until uh, eight o'clock tomorrow there's no power it's going to be a lot of dead people because yeah. people are going to be freezing and a lot Elderly. of people are dumb they'll start you know basically setting up a, a a thing to burn inside of their house like a bonfire and they're going to suffocate it'll happen well, it's, it's, I was going to dispute that, but you know, there are people who are so goddamn stupid that that might. They help did that happen. in Texas. A few people died like that. Yeah, that the happened, that killed. happened in, yeah. in Australia on the Aborigine reserves, reserves constantly, though. So, oh yeah, I've, man. I've heard about that, like setting up fires inside the houses. They would do dumb shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They thought, that. oh, I can heat up the house, you know, like the, because my roof is like iced over, so I'm going to set up a fire here. People are dumb. People are really, really dumb. Well, it's a, you yeah. know what I'm thinking is that the, the problem with industrial civilization, industrial society that we have, is yeah. that we have uh, uh, essentially suspended uh, uh, survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Because yeah. people would, in, in before our industrial society, people who would do stupid shit would naturally die out. Okay, mm -hmm. and it would improve the the, <laughs> the the stock, if you will, of the yes. remaining humans, right? Yep. But That's now, right. because of industrial society, we maintain all of these morons, these fools, mm -hmm. these idiots who, you know, in the past they would have been eaten by the lion because they're they're yep. the guys who say, "Oh, look, there's a lion. Let me go and pet it," you know, <laughs> and they would have been eaten, you know. Yep. But yep. we decided, oh no, we have to protect these fools from themselves, and so maybe now this this might actually be beneficial to humanity as a whole. Because yep. we will, what? you know, the, the, the fools will kill themselves off by starting bonfires in their living rooms or something. It's like one big Reddit moment, you know, like when they all decided <laughs> to travel to Ukraine and fight against the Russians because they oh, thought it'd be a God, one big fucking so party. Funny. Yeah. It was so funny. Because yeah, they're, they're, they're bloodstains now. They're bloodstains yeah, now. Yeah, what happened is a lot of these guys came out here to Ukraine, right? And they figured that this war was going to be like the wars that they were used to because a lot of them were soldiers. Yeah, right? yeah. And they thought air power is what I'm thinking. They they figure it's just going to be fought by air power. It'll be mop yep. up operation. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they got a they got one taste of it, and they were like, no fuck mm -hmm. no. There was this famous <laughs> Canadian sniper Wally, right, who came in like all tough. Yep. You know, there was video of him coming in the airport, you know, carrying just one bag, and he looked like all badass, right? He got one taste of that shit, and he was like, fuck this, and he fled back to Canada, and nobody reported that. Nobody no, reported that. Yeah, yeah. Was, only it, Russians it, reported it because you know it's hilarious. Because it's funny. It was yeah. funny, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you see these Russians and uh, and Ukrainian soldiers. Okay, yeah. I mean, I, both sides. They hardcore. are hardcore. They don't fuck around. And and yeah. the, the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian fighters, whatever you may think of of uh, 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 Zelensky and Zaluzny and Azov and Right and all these people, they are hardcore. They don't fuck yeah. around. And and yeah. they are They're tough, real tough motherfuckers, right? And yep. these Westerners who show up all tough, man, they mm -hmm. are like, 
fucking cookie dough in comparison. They're like <laughs> the marshmallow men, right? Like recruits, I mean, they are yeah. pussies. They are. Well, think, yeah. about it, think about like, uh, for example, the United States. I mean, even I have a friend of mine, and he's a plumber, and uh, but he's a plumber for the DoD, so he flies around. He's here in Japan right now. Uh, yeah, you, you got flown out, out by the DoD and he's a fucking plumber. <laughs> yeah, why did they just hire a local? Resources. No, no, no. He was he was in Germany for a while. Uh, he rents a place out here, but I mean, before that, they would send him to Afghanistan. They'd send him to Iraq, and he was telling me on the basis, you know, like Bagram Air Base had like a Burger King or something like that, or a McDonald's. I mean, uh, it, these are not like I, so I'm not. Pushy. These are not soldiers that are peeling potatoes anymore, or digging trenches, filling sandbags. Yeah, they're soft. Uh, they're not, they're not, no, I mean these are these are soldiers. That go, men. They'll go through after a B fifty two strike, you know, or a few Tomahawk cruise missiles taking out an entire village. Go by and maybe shoot a couple of people who are wounded, and then that's a mop up operation. Let's get back to the Burger King, and I think there's a football game on satellite. That's yeah. what generally American soldiers are are used to, and that's why a meat grinder like this is is, is something I think that hasn't been seen. In a terrifying. very, very long time. Yeah. No, it hasn't been seen since the Second World War. World War. Right. Yeah. Right. And like, like a, me- so a, mechanized, a big mechanized fight like this, yeah. Yeah, and also what's really funny is that they 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 say that uh, the Russians are so slow, they're bogged down. No, they're not. No. Every fucking day, they're chewing up all it's these fortifications. Movement. And that's something else, too, that I've noticed that the Western media totally denies. They totally deny that there's any fortification and that there's a reason that this war is going so slowly. They insist that it's because the Zelensky regime forces are so effective at holding the line on the Russians. No. So the thing is, see, you got to keep in mind, all this area is highly industrialized. Okay. And so these uh, and also these uh, apartment complexes, the hospitals and schools that they use that the Zelensky regime forces do use as fortifications. Right. They clear out the civilians and use it themselves. And that's why later, of course, they say, oh, they bombed the hospital or they bombed the kindergarten and shit like that. Dude. It was a fortification. Yeah, was in there. These these things, man, they're they are Soviet built, right? Yep. It's fucking it's concrete, rebar concrete. Okay. This shit is I mean, you really need a really couple of big howitzers to knock this down, right? And so yeah. it takes time to grind through all this shit. But it's the all Russian snipers all over the fucking place too, right? It's oh, not. Yeah, it's, but the, the snipers. It, it, that, that's not the big deal. The big deal is that the, they use artillery. What the Russians are doing right. is real simple. They are basically holding back. And they bombed the shit out of it with artillery. And I'm talking mm-hmm. morning, noon, and night. You know, they're, they're dropping, uh, they're firing, rather, something between 50 and 75,000 yep. shells per day. Okay? I mean, that yeah. is just an enormous amount. And sure, the front is 1,200 kilometers, which is roughly like 800 miles, something like that. But they are relentlessly grinding day after day. And they fucking blow everything to smithereens. And only then they come in with the troops. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's smart. why Combined that's arms. why the Russians don't have the catastrophic losses that the Zelensky yeah. regime forces have. Okay. Yeah, this guys point, like is, is, uh, is there any any word on the street in Ukraine about the morale within, oh, no. within Ukraine? It's tightly, tightly controlled. I'm tightly just wondering controlled. because the thing is, it's like this entire war seems like probably one of the most orchestrated proxy unnecessary wars that I can oh, yeah. think of yeah. in the yeah. last. No question. I well, there's a lot of uh, surrenders, you know. There's a lot Sorry? of uh, there's a lot of surrenders happening, like mass surrenders uh, with the Ukrainians. Uh, it's never the other way around. The Russians. Oh yeah, you are never see. You, yeah, you, you rarely see uh, 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 Russian POWs, and you never see any mass surrender. But you, yep. you, on, on Telegram small, channels, you see it all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And the the thing that that is going on is that the um, the, the the Zelensky regime forces, they are basically following the orders of NATO and the Pentagon. Yep. And because the Pentagon and NATO, they're, they're, you know, fly by wire kind of situation insofar as leadership of this battle of this war is concerned. And so they are implementing NATO and Pentagon uh, strategy and they are losing catastrophically. Yeah, they're trying to they, fight them like they're as if they're the, 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 the Taliban, you know, like they are not taking into account the fact that Russians have artillery. The Taliban didn't have artillery. And if yeah. they did, it was like tiny mortars. So yeah, the yeah. strategies they're using to fight against the Russians, like, oh, you need to just build a trench. I mean, that obviously works against the Taliban. They can't fire over it, right? It's a trench. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the Russians don't have a problem. They just, they use, a, they use like a, a shit ton of, like they use a rolling barrage and all those people are dead. Like within yeah. an instant, 500 dead. 
dead Ukrainians. Yeah. And I've seen the results of it. Just dead Ukrainians, the whole field of it. And the, and the Russians are like in awe. They're like, wow, I can't believe we just fucking stayed there. You know, they're, yeah. they're like speaking Russian. Yeah. You can translate it. And it's like, I can't believe these guys didn't just fucking leave. We were bombing yeah. them. Why the hell did they do this? I mean, this is such a waste. They yeah, it is. And, and, and that's the, the thing that, that just absolutely <laughs> breaks my heart. And I say this every time because it is because it's a needless waste of life of all of these young men. And yep. these are the young men that you're going to need to rebuild mm -hmm. the fucking country. After no, no, no. There's going to be like Newfoundland, of Africa, and the Middle East. Or, or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, it's so like that, Newfoundland, right? In World War One, they sent all these guys to Newfoundland in a single uh, battalion into the Ardennes, and they all died. And so none yeah. of them came home. And so all those women were widowed, and the island got depopulated as a result of that because everybody left, right? Yeah. That's all and and it's still as not as big as it could be. Still the, it's still like they've got like one town on that island and pretty much everything else is there's nothing yep. there. Uh, with yeah, that yeah. said, guys, I'm going to take off. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I want to say thanks to both of you. I'll be in Likewise. touch with both of you guys. Uh, I'd love to do it again sometime. Yeah, we uh, should. We yeah, should. absolutely. Yeah. It was great. This is awesome. Uh, put it in the yeah. chat, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take off. Thanks very much for having me, guys, and uh, hope you guys can finish it off on a high note. So thanks very much, guys. Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. Take it easy, Felix. Good to have you. Yeah. So, Ian, what's the clown world? Before we, we wind it down, what's the clown world that you want to emphasize? Oh, man. Because there's so uh, many. It's the this is so much, right? I mean, like, <laughs> I'm looking at Twitter. It, it's like, like if you just scroll to even, like, my own time, like, you go, you know, to my Twitter account, and it's like, holy shit, this is kind of depressing. You know, like, it's crazy yeah. news after crazy news after crazy news. It's not even like, a, you know, people used to have to make this shit up, like, with The Onion, right, like, 20 years ago, 10 years ago even. Now it's like no, this is this is real. This is happening. And, <laughs> I know and people are okay with it. Yeah, yeah. You know uh, the Babylon B headline has got nothing yep. on reality, man. I mean, it's, That's right. it's absurd. And, yeah. and the thing is, see, at this point, you know, it has happened to me on more than one occasion that I see something and I think it's a joke. Yeah. And no, it, it was real. It's real. It, it, it it's was real. like a real thing. And exactly sometimes thing. now the parodies. I, I assume that they're real because the, it's so yep. outrageous, the re regular reality that we are experiencing right. that I see some parody that I'm like, oh, and I tweet it out, not yeah, realizing it was, it was fake. <laughs> and the worst part is that like two weeks happens. later, it's true. It becomes you know? it's real, like, right? It becomes real. Yeah. Like there's, you know, like there's some fake parody account saying that a professor promotes zoophilia and you're like, ah, you know, ah, fuck shit. it. Yeah. yeah, and, and then, then it comes out. And yeah, it's German by the way, protesters like 20 of them. in favor of yep. zoophilia, man. And oh. there's like, and then the 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 uh, the psychiatry association backs them. Actually, agrees with zoophilia. It's like, what? Excuse me, what the fuck happened here? Like, you would think, oh, maybe it's just one guy, right? I mean, you know, when when even when you, when it, you it know turns out it's real, it's just one guy. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, you're blowing it out of proportion, Ian. There's no way, you know, like you're you're just claiming this because you hate liberals or something. And then you, you you wait for the response from the uh, you know American Psychology Association or whatever, and they're like, oh yeah, by the way, we back this person. And they're like, huh? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's real. So it's not it, a one-off it, it, guy. It's not just like you know one dude. No, it's it's all of them apparently. Oh okay. And the the thing that ultimately what bothers me the most is that when you start digging into all this situation, you start yep. to realize that people are making shit tons of money off of this. They stuff. are. And, yep. And they're getting government money funding. Yeah. Or grants. like for instance, for instance, like with the trans stuff, right? Yep. Oh yeah, I had no idea how fucking much money was involved. Yeah, in these things. There, there's this one huge. That call so they right, get like put they this get book out, so right? much money off of it. Yeah, yeah, and he's like got quotes from all these doctors who do the these surgeries, and they're like, oh yeah, we we're actually basically just experimenting on the kids. And uh, by the way, yeah. we get paid like a shit ton of money. This is like a gold rush right now. So if you're a surgeon and you got no ethics, just get into it. You know, just experiment yeah. some kids. And if it it goes wrong, just say, well, it's an experimental treatment. I mean, it's not their fault, right? It's not my fault. So yeah. just make your money. You know, make your buck. Yeah. Uh, there's no there's no like actual policy guidelines it's not like you know when you're doing heart surgery there's like a whole set of procedures protocols you know things that are established things that you know work with this yeah. it's basically like plastic surgery do whatever the fuck you want you're they're like the doctor in escape from la you know like played by bruce campbell the guy the fucked up face with the plastic surgery they're all mm -hmm. like him these guys yeah. are just like him except they're mutilating your kid's genitals rather than you know doing bad plastic surgery on your face yeah, That's and, and it's perfectly acceptable. And of course, yep. you, you have these poor people who later are detransitioning, right? And yep. they're like, why didn't somebody stop me? This was crazy. Mm -hmm. I was nuts at the time. And, yep. and, I, and, and they themselves say it. They, they say yep. after the fact, they were, I was mentally unstable. I had all kinds yep. of problems. 
And there's also a key issue that that deeply bothers me because you see, um, we all know as adults know that uh, when girls uh, mm -hmm. transition from being girls after uh, uh, menzies, they transition into women. There is a period of time that they are extraordinarily uncomfortable with their bodies. Yeah, they hate uh, themselves. Uh, at that point. Yeah, Judy yeah. Bloom. I mean, they feel they, uncomfortable. Yeah, their breasts Judy, hurt. Yeah, the the Judy Bloom, the the uh, children's author, you know, wrote books about this stuff. About yep. uh, I remember there was one. Uh, Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Uh, yeah, which very is well precisely about that. Yeah, yep. and um, and I remember reading it as a kid, and and mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is really weird because I'd never thought of girls having these kinds of problems. Right, and yeah. uh, and of course they do. That they're so incredibly uncomfortable with their bodies. Like mm -hmm. you say, their breasts and, are growing yeah. and it hurts. And men are sexualizing them and they're uncomfortable with it because I mean, yeah, who can blame them? They've got some of creepy course, guys still still looking at them. Yeah, yeah right. And it's like, oh my children. God, why is everybody looking at me so, you know, like treating me like I'm an object, a sexual object? They're, they're drooling at me. Oh, gross. Yeah. Yeah. So they want to get yeah. away from it. So they become yeah. tomboys usually, right? They become tomboys. And that was normal. That was fine. But yeah, now it's exactly. like the, the, the psychologists, they go to, for one session and they're like, oh, you're trans. Get your breasts chopped off. Yeah. Exactly. One session. One yeah. fucking session. That's why they're shutting down Tavistock, by the way, the, the gender clinic in the UK. They found yeah. out that most of the cases, one session, two hours, one session. That's it. And they're like, you're trans. And then just like, you know, I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's we put more, doctors pay more attention to somebody coming in and saying that they have chronic pain and they want a script for morphine. They pay yeah. more attention to that guy. Than mm -hmm. to some, uh, you know, fourteen-year-old girl who feels uncomfortable in her body, which is just natural, yep. and and they give her, they say, oh yeah, go ahead, transition, no problem, and and mm -hmm. the irresponsibility of it. I think that that's the thing that bothers me the most. Yep. The, we have taken tolerance to this extreme where anything is allowed, no matter how absurd, and especially children who do not have any kind of discernment, and, yep. and nobody says anything, and they're afraid uh, to because they're afraid. Live and let live. Live and let yeah, live, they're afraid right? of insane. saying no. Th this this is wrong. They're they're yeah. afraid because have you heard anybody say no? This is wrong. At no. most, they say Just I'm us. uncomfortable with this. I'm uncomfortable yeah. with this. You know, or yeah. I don't all, think this is yeah. appropriate. You know, yep. nobody yeah. says this is wrong. You, you know? need to stop this, right? Maybe lives to TikTok says it. Uh, Matt Walsh certainly says it. You know, Ben Shapiro and oh yeah, the, did you see that document yeah. documentary? I haven't seen. Oh, that. Yeah. I've seen clips of it. It's beautiful. It's awesome. I mean, it's it's heartbreaking. It's funny. It's it's everything. You need to watch it. One hundred percent, one of the best things I've ever seen, and also one of the hardest things I've had to watch. I mean, it's only an hour long, but it feels like it's ten hours long because of how much information is packed into it. There are things there that he explores that you know even he didn't know about before getting into it. So you know, example? even if, it, uh, for example, um, the fact that they they promote the stuff in colleges, like the the people backing all of these ideas, uh, you know, like they are basically. Uh, uh, they're pushing stuff that they themselves don't understand and don't want to admit. And then anyone who tries to do any sort of pushback, they're shut down immediately. Like you can't ask these guys questions. So even though they're like advocating for uh, trans surgeries and you ask them why, they can't give you an answer. They're like, they, they, it's like the, the doctors he in, interviews, they shut down. They lock down in the middle of the interview and be like, this interview is over. Like yeah, they just I, I, won't I even that. defend themselves. Yeah, yeah it's insane. They can't. They can't defend themselves. I yep, mean, because if refuse. you know that if, if you uh, have a, a particular truth, whatsoever that truth may be, insofar as a specific uh, topic, right, you can yep. instantly explain it. I mean, it's it's no trouble at oh, all. It's easy. You know? Yeah. 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 And you, and you can you go into the because... details and say, oh, it's wrong because of this, that, the other, or it's appropriate, or it should be done because of these reasons. I mean, it's it's no trick. Yep. When, when you have the truth on your side, it's mm -hmm. easy to defend the truth, but it's hard yep. to defend bullshit. And so right. basically... That's what's going on, right? Exactly, it's exactly what's going on. Yeah, and and they 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 hide the stories of all the the you know the kids who have undergone transitions. Like they don't uh, like they demonize them. In fact, right? Anyone who is a detransitioner, I mean, you can look at for yourself uh, on Twitter where these uh, there's these detransitioners. They get attacked every single day, and not even necessarily by trans people, but by their trans allies, right? Like the people who support this stuff, the people who are doctors with MD and at the end of the fucking username, right? Like these are the guys like Jack Turban MD. Uh, that guy's a piece of shit. I mean, these are the guys who are attacking detransitioners, and they're like, oh, the detransitioners are just a troll, you know? Like they instantly dismiss 
the lived experiences, I hate using the term, but they dismiss the lived experiences of all these young girls who, you know, made a mistake that's irreversible. I mean, they yeah. lie openly to you. They claim, oh, it's, it's totally reversible. You can just get your breasts grown back. No, you fucking can't. Their voices are changed forever. I mean, these some of these girls, they look normal. They're beautiful. You know, they're, they're okay now. But you listen to them talk, you think it's a guy talking. And, yeah. and they're stuck with that for the rest of their yeah. lives unless they come up some a way to give them some special surgery but it doesn't exist no, yet so no it, it's it, it's not going to be for decades and it doesn't matter yep. it's, the damage is done you the know damage I mean, is done because yep. there are some things that are irreversible and that's one of them listen mm -hmm. ian it's it's been great talking to you and it, yep, i think likewise. we had a really good time and uh yeah I, I had a blast at least i i hope you did too man it was Fuck a lot yeah let's yeah. do more of this yeah yeah it's awesome absolutely yeah. uh, what i'll probably yeah. do is this sunday i'm gonna have like an open house because it, it's oh, cool. becoming like a like a thing of just you know opening up the the chat and whoever shows up shows up and so mm -hmm. uh yeah i'm 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 probably if not this sunday uh then certainly the next sunday because i want to make it like a regular yeah. feature of just right. like putting out the the invite link and people show up and talk for as long as they want so that yeah like it, it's i'm yeah. glad you enjoyed it yeah and and yep. felix and mish uh Thanks so much for both of you for joining. And chat, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I, it was a lot of fun, man. I, certainly for, a lot of fun Hell for yeah. me, and I hope for you too. So Absolutely. I Thanks will, for having me on. Yeah. yeah, my pleasure, man. Anytime. So um, chat, I'll catch you next time. Take it easy.